open in a cramped office. Boxes piled high enough to block out the only window in this tiny room. Ellis sweeps from end to end, frantically pacing. He quietly mumbles to himself, clearly venting something. Those goddamn good-for-nothing evaluators never gave a shit about me! Ugh, he's just so fucking mad. He's kicking boxes and shit. They used me for fucking bait, bro. That's it, that's it. I'll fucking, I'll fucking show those motherfuckers. And then as soon as he's talking, there's a knock at the door. He gets cut off. But they don't say anything. Ellis responds, Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm almost ready, okay? Whatever, just wait. The door swings open, revealing a purple figure. It's hulking, bigger than normal. Their body seems almost blurred to Ellis. The creature reaches his hand out to the mare. A long, twisted claw wraps itself around his head and pulls in to face him. You remember our deal, yes? Ellis shivers before responding. Of course, yeah, 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 totally, totally. You don't have to worry about me, okay? As soon as this debate ends, I'll, I'll get assigned to the law. There's nothing to worry about, okay? Let's do this. The purple figure's mouth pulls into a horrid, fanged grin. Finally. It's almost time. Fade to black. We pick up with you guys. Uh, it's been probably like 45 minutes since what just happened in the end of last session. You guys are all kind of pulling up to the skyline um just to kind of like do some game planning or whatever because this um i'll tell you now this debate is in an hour it's coming up very soon the debate's happening today um so the first people that arrive are frank uh radio and alfonso you guys pull up in the cab you guys all rode together and you got the monk with you monked up he's chilling next to you guys um radio go ahead and Actually, all three of you, good. Make an uh, insight check for me. Okay. Oh no, I got eighteen. Okay. Um, yeah, seventeen for me. Alfonso and Frank, you both notice he keeps nervously looking at his phone. Um, okay. Meanwhile, Caesar he pulls up right behind you guys, and you guys all walk in to the skyline, the lobby of the skyline. It's bustling with activity. There are zombies. There are Kenku. There are. Uh, just like random people like you know, there's sticky. There's mr. Cat mr. Clown basically the whole crew is here and everyone's moving on the floor. They're setting up TV screens um, They're like setting up snacks. There's like a buffet area the place is bustling and you're not really sure why uh, But you can see at the heart of it. It seems that Jennifer is kind of directing everything So Jennifer's standing with a clipboard in the middle of the floor and she's kind of saying like oh put this there put this there put this there um, what do you guys do as you walk in? Frank is, uh, Frank is like, holy shit. There's a lot of people in here. Hey, Jennifer. I didn't realize they got a lot of, a lot of stuff. Yeah, wh what's going on? This is a pretty, pretty impressive turnaround you got here. Well, listen. What, did uh, you just get hired like two days ago? I, <laughs> Yesterday? I, listen, uh, I've, I've, well, I've been working for you guys for a while, but here's the thing. <laughs> um, the debate tonight, I figured... Uh, we should have like a big watch party here. Um, you guys also talked about wanting to launch the app, Town Squared. Um, I've got a bunch of people still at the uh, the Dead Burger. They're working in case there's any like stressing uh, on the system. They they can they can uh, troubleshoot all that there. But we for the most part we can do the launch here along with like this watch party and uh, maybe drum up some support for Mayor Fuck. I just figured it would it would work for you guys. We have like a little party here. Jessica, this is incredible. Yeah, I turned to the rest of the gang. Have we ever had uh, what you would call a non-player character come through in, in such yeah. a way? My name is Jennifer, by the way, if you want to start calling me that. This is the most competent associate. I was about to say competence, I mean, yeah. Jennifer, what what can I do for you? How can I, I what, what do you what do you yearn for in life? How can I reward you for your, your ingenuity here? I just... You guys make me feel free, okay? That's it, really. I, I, Lirahan could never, really. You guys are the best bosses I could have asked for. I mean, the only thing I could possibly want is Randy back. But, you know, uh, well, that's not going to happen. So, 
What about, dental, what about dental benefits? No, hey, Fonzie, don't be saying things like that. <laughs> Randy's, not, Randy's not coming back. <laughs> hey, you don't know that. Yeah, dental benefits sound nice, if that's the thing. Uh, I don't think I... My teeth are kind of, like, you know, rotted. Let me get a smile. The there's, uh, <laughs> there's, like, three teeth in her mouth right now. Oh. Yeah. We'll get you the dental. Okay. Yeah, that's what we'll do. <laughs> That'll hey, work. good shit. I go to dap her up. Uh, yeah. Even though she's a nasty zombie. Oof. Thank you. I don't wipe my hand off because Frank never does that. Hey, you guys want to uh, keep it moving here? We can just kind of let them do their thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. What if we want to go to talk? I got the penthouse. Yeah, that's probably a safe place. What's Monked Up doing? I look at him right now. Is he? I'm suspicious of this motherfucker now. I want to say that Frank's been side eyeing him the whole time. Is he uh, still on his phone? He he like he like texts his phone kind of like he's like angrily like typing, and then he <laughs> hangs out and he shoves his phone in his pocket. He, turn, he looks up from his phone and just sees Frank staring at him. What's... Oh, I threw my cigarette. What's uh, what's going on here? Your yeah, animation. What's going on? <laughs> Why are you tap it on the phone like that? Nothing. Nothing. It's not It's not a big no, deal. No, it's very clearly something. I There's need people to trying to reach to out to me that I, I have no interest in them reaching out to me. Okay? Are we talking like ex-girlfriend or are we talking big pasta monster? What I mean, here's the thing. We're getting ready to go do like a big conspiracy in the penthouse and we're going to bring you along and I see you. You don't look stable. You don't look like you're at the top of your game right now. Frank. Okay, I'm cool. You I'm, look monked down. I, I'm <laughs> monked down a little bit, but Frank, you got to understand I'm cool, okay? Listen, you guys killed Mr. Pig for me, okay? The second I heard that, I'm all in on your your crop, You seem pretty kind of, kind of seem pissed about it yesterday or earlier. <laughs> Look, I was just... I lost. stole your thunder. I stole my thunder, but, I mean, you guys ultimately did a really good thing. And you you avenged my friends. And that's all that matters. Okay? I've sat on it a little bit since the 45-minute cab ride over here. I think we're good. Okay? Just... Can I roll inside on this guy? Yeah, roll inside. Just, just for fun. Ooh. No, well, twelve. I'm not gonna discern anything about this gentleman. No, uh, you actually like you look him in the eyes and you realize that he's being genuine when he says he's with you guys. Oh, uh, he's so he's so monked up right now. He's so monked up. All right, buddy. Sorry for questioning you. Let's let's go. Okay, so we're going to the penthouse. Yeah. Okay. All of you pile into the elevator. Uh, and can I try to take this phone? Oh yeah, totally. Do I do it? Sliding hand. 17. 17's easy. So what you do is you kind of like <laughs> rope his ass for a second and pop your finger up on the bottom of his pocket and slip his phone into your sleeve, into one of your like 13 sleeves because you're wearing so many shirts right now. Um, yeah, uh, easy. It's yours. Uh, and while you're in the elevator, I'll say you kind of like turn into the corner and look through it. Okay. Um, it's uh, Peter the Putrid who is texting him. And it's specifically he's saying like, where are you? You've gone dark. We'll find you. We had a deal. And this guy has been ignoring him. <laughs> I'm not going to answer this. I'm not going to. He thought about he's typing. Going. You know, he did type. He didn't send he's anything. Yeah, it's a therapy exercise. He's typing exactly. it out and deleting it. If you go to his notes app, you see a, a strongly worded text. <laughs> I'm looking for something. I can't find it. Caesar responds, but the response is going to be hidden at this time. It's gonna okay. Come up later. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay, so you guys reach the penthouse. Ding! Doors open, and you're here. What are you doing? What's the plan? Is Big Ronnie here? Oh, yeah. Big Ron's here. Big Ronnie, it's good to see you. You're the campaign manager. It's kind of where, where you at? Why am I just now seeing you an hour before the debate? What's going on? Uh, I've been putting it in the prep, Frankie. What the fuck is? What, I mean, I'm what you put it in the prep. I got. What are you prepping? Because I'm supposed to be prepping well, with like, you. They said a debate's coming up, so I wrote a bunch of questions for you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I've never watched a debate. We're supposed to answer the questions. <laughs> We're not asking. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I thought you could really use it. He, he slides the paper to you. And you look at the paper and it says, why do cows have four legs? And it's like, it's like, why do people, why do people have to be so mean to cats? 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a bunch of them. I'm flipping through all these. He's written like hundreds of them. I'm like, Ronnie, I admire your, your zeal, <laughs> but this is completely and totally fucked up. What you're doing to me right now. Uh, I just figured maybe we could, like, we could get. Look, I'm. Listen, big you're Ronnie. this close to being medium sized Ronnie if you fucking. Why don't you actually just chill for a little bit? <laughs> Never mind. I thought you were going to be a fun, useful guy. <laughs> These questions. <laughs> we can't all be Jufus around here. We can't. Rest in peace to a real one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, he sucked too, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, boys. I've been doing some thinking earlier. I wasn't really. Uh, I hadn't had enough time to process things, but I, I, I got an idea on how I want to spin this shit with Ellis and in the, and the, in, you know what he was saying. Radio, I got a question for you. Shoot. Do you think, uh, how hard would it be for you to either, uh, fabricate some sort of bank transaction between Ellis and Pig, or B, hack into this man and, and actually make the transfer? Um, can I roll some kind of check to see if that's even possible, Trev, or totally. do I know? Totally, Okay. What do I roll? Arcana check. Okay. That's what we use for tech. 25. <laughs> Easily within your capabilities. Uh, I would say it would take Which a one? point. Uh, just she, she can fabric hack in and, and actually transfer the money or just fabricate? You, you could hack in and uh, uh, fabricate uh, like a pay stub, like as if a payment has been made. Um, in terms of actual transfer, you would have to put money into the account. It would just be an extra step and the money would have to come from you specifically, but you could do that. Oh, we're, we're doing that. Okay. Okay. Why, I need you to wire, make it look like a bunch of money was wired to, uh, to Mr. Pig's bank account. Got it. When you want that done? Right now. Well, All right. if you can back, can you? Do you have access to manipulate the transaction? Can you backdate it? Make it look like it was uh, yesterday, a couple days ago. I assume that would be within my capabilities, right, Trevor? Absolutely. So Twenty-five. Okay. All right. Nice. So while you're while you're cooking on that, this is what I'm thinking. We make it seem like Ellis and Pig were in on this shit together the whole time, right? So we're gonna spin this as this is what they do. To stop people from coming together this is how they don't want the king coup and the zombies to be able to vote these are the links they're willing to go to pig and ellis are in cahoots ellis knows the pig has a big lead pig knows he's got a big lead what does he do he goes to ellis and says hey i know you want to stay to marry you i know you got this philip fuck guy trying to fuck your your shit you know what i'm saying you wire me a bunch of money i'll skip town i leave i'm gone forever oh Okay, and Ellis says, "Oh yeah, let's let's fucking do it. That's fucking awesome. I'm I suck." <laughs> so he does that, right? Then, as we are gonna act like we were investigating this, the Patriots, the entire time, undercover. Okay, as soon as we uncover this entire scheme, and that's why we have this bank statement. As soon as we uncover this entire scheme, Ellis finds out that he, you know, that we know that he knows. So what does he do? He hires one of Mr. Pig's goons to rough him up, make it look like the, the Patriots attacked him. So we flip the whole thing on his head. We do it during the debate, make it look like the whole thing. It gives us an alibi for Pig just being gone, and we put the whole thing on Ellis's head. So smart, and thank it, you. Big Ronnie's talking. What do we think? It's it's just like a little bit less good than my plan was, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> It's just greasy enough to work. I, so I was trying to think of the greasiest thing I could do, you know. I was gonna say we eat them. I was gonna say we 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 kill we kill Mayor Ellis. Oh, we're gonna do that. No, that's that's happening. But we gotta we'll wait a little bit. Did you, you say eat him? Gonna go. No, Is maybe not that part. Consume <laughs> him. I thought maybe we, like that could be like a side effect, like it's something we could do on the side. You're all over the place. So you're saying, you're saying you're eating people, Randy? <laughs> I need you to. I need know you what you're confessing? Look, he Randy's kicked. Dead. He, I saw him Fonzie. kick a cat the other day. Randy died. <laughs> He's been dead. Are you good? <laughs> little Randy. <laughs> I'm little Ronnie. Okay, I wish I could be a oh, little big little Randy. Randy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, let's do this thing. Let's fucking do it. I mean, yeah, I don't know what other debate prep. I mean, I'm just going to be the, I'm just going to be dope, basically. You know, they're going to ask me, are you going to do dope shit? I'm going to be like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think I got the questions under control. What are you guys going to get up to today? Because, I mean, you know, you guys don't have to come to the debate. Um, I, I want to. 
I was gonna ask actually if you need anything else from me because I am going to be going to rendezvous with them. Uh, I'm sorry. What is his name? Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Sorry, it's been a while. Um, Hawthorne. Yeah. Nah, you're good. I mean, you got the bank statements. Uh, I have access to those. I mean, we're good. We're chilling. You do whatever. You got a strong moral center too. You could really make sure you're not getting pushed around. Beautiful. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Alfonso, what's, what are your plans, Alfonso? Yeah, well, now that I know that you were able to at least make contact with Gluttony, I, I'm going to try to my best to conjure up a scenario similar to yours to where I can make contact with Pride. And, uh, Frank, I'm not sure if you still need little uh, Big Ronnie uh, to be a campaign manager for this debate. If not, then I could use him because he, he's one of the most prideful individuals I know. Yeah, I think I think he's better suited with you because he looks like he's a little out of his depth. On the what do you say, Lil Ronnie? <laughs> I just, Ronnie. I mean, I feel like maybe you didn't read all the questions fully because I mean, there's a lot of promise there. Maybe you, maybe you, you when you hit put the, the mic, best ones on top, you should have put the best ones first. I sprinkled him. I sprinkled yeah, him. I did. That was your. That was a mistake you made. Yeah, because because you imagine like he gets up there and he starts asking questions like nobody's even gonna like, no one's gonna stop him. He's got the mic, like, so he can ask him many questions as he wants. No, there, there's literally a guy. Yeah, there's a time there's limit. A, there's, a, there's a referee. You have so many you. basic things wrong about this. <laughs> and this is your job. No one ever trained me, so. I mean, that's... That's true. I mean, that's me. fair. That's Somebody fair. trained anybody. I just killed a really yeah. strong Kenku, and then you guys are like, well, this guy's qualified, so. And I killed him so easily, though, so. <laughs> Frank doesn't say anything. Worry, big <laughs> Ronnie. I think you'll serve my purposes perfectly. All right, let's go. He, he, uh, sinister. he climbs on I your think back. You gotta get sacrificed, big Ronnie. You just gotta, gotta watch your ass, little Ronnie. <laughs> if you have any final affairs, <laughs> yeah, dude, get your shit in order because you're getting fingered tonight. <laughs> uh, little Ronnie's not scared of death, buddy. And little Ronnie's scared in the face. You climbing up something? Yeah, you gotta get fingered. To death. I'm, I'm holding on to the like that. the back of uh, uh, Alfonso's shoulders. He's climbed up. Back. Yeah. Right. How big is he? <laughs> <laughs> is, he like, is he like a man? He's just a very he's like, big cat. Yeah, he's like he's a large cat. Yeah. He's, he's, there's no way. I just heard man coon for the first time tonight, and you said that word. There's no way. <laughs> oh yeah. Ever seen a man coon? It happens. Yeah. That's the, that's the biggest cat I could think of. That's disturbing. That is he's on your back, cat. and he's that big. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, get down, dude. Uh -oh. Jesus. I just figured like you did you ask though. him? Did you ask him for that, or you just do it? Alfonso, can I stay up here? Hey, I mean, if you're chilling there, it's easier this way. Exactly. This like you guys always weird. want to fix a problem that's not a problem. Let's go. <laughs> he he like taps you on the back to start walking. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And you see that as we're walking away, that Alfonso is just kind kind of tinkering. I don't know if you guys remember his homunculus servant. That's a butterfly. He's just kind of tinkering, making some modifications to it as we walk away. Rio follows him out. He has to leave too for that meeting. Okay. <laughs> You see, Frank is in deep thought about what Ronnie just said. <laughs> do I do that? I don't do that. Do I, Caesar? We don't make problems out of no problem. That doesn't no, sound like I feel us. Like, I feel like if we find one, then there was a problem in the first place. So yeah, and I feel maybe like maybe we, we find problems, but we don't make them. We I think that's that, that 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 must be what it is. Yeah. The two of us, you know, because there's no way it would be us creating the problems. We've nah. never. I can't think of a time that we've ever done that to somebody. <laughs> Uh, what what are you gonna do? You're gonna you chilling? I got plans that look. I got a couple things on. I'm gonna try to do two things at once. <clears throat> I'm not sure how where they're gonna they harmonize, but I'm gonna find the biggest washing machine here in Arkney. I found like I got this guy's phone. I don't know. If, I'm gonna brief y'all on it. And I sent I sent this to him, and I said I'm having the time of my life here. <laughs> I sent it. <laughs> I said come join me. I'm baiting the putrid. I'm still there. <laughs> Why <Wow, laughs> holding Monk phone? I, I, I turn and look at him. I say, "Hey, is this your phone?" I think I think that might be my phone. I look at the con what is his contact for Peter the Future? <laughs> what does he call him? It's it says P Peter, and then it's like a throwing up emoji. Three of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you wouldn't happen to be who's this nasty bitch you're texting over here? <laughs> This is uh, the Peter? Yeah, that's Peter the Putrid. This is he's your, he's your butt buddy? No, okay, like you guys are 
Okay, look, first of all, a huge invasion of privacy. I didn't realize. I'm asking you if you're in love with this man. I'm not in love. I don't even care about him. I, that's why so I was ignoring like him. not important if you if are. If we you trap know. him and torture him for information of how to get the pasta pit, you'll be, you'll be in my side. You won't betray me. Look, guys, let me be real with you, okay? Um, Pasta Pete sent me up here. He sent me up here to work with you guys. He told me that if I could maybe follow you around, you know, find out where you guys keep all your shit, you know, just keep track of you, and then maybe he lead you down to the pits, okay? But I promise the second you told me that you killed Mr. Pig, I realized that... I couldn't do that because that was my greater goal to, to get to Mr. Pig, to work with Peter, work with Pete and get Mr. Pig murdered. But you guys already did that. And truthfully, I want to work with you guys. Well, here's the thing with that, though, is because the, before you found out that we killed Mr. Pig, you had just done the whole like, hey, guys, I'm going to work with you. Can I be on your team? And then <laughs> and now you're coming and telling me that the same thing. Now you were bullshitting. Same thing. OK, that, back then. Yeah, I know. So what you just told me is, hey, I was lying earlier. You didn't know I was lying, but I'm telling you I'm lying. But I'm not lying now. You're aware that that's how this plays? He hangs his head in shame, and he says, look, you guys can... I, truthfully, my life's in your hands, okay? I don't want to work with these fuckers. I understand it's sketchy. It's a bad situation to be in. Do what you got to do, okay? I can take you to Peter. I can take you to Pasta. Uh, I, I can I can help you wipe out the pals, okay? But if you guys can't trust me, I understand. I turn to Caesar. I say, what do you think? Yeah, I can trust you after you help me with my scheme. Listen, I, look, there's got to be some <laughs> big washing machines. I feel like you lure him. He's obviously in love with you. I read so much of your messages. How you can't see it, I don't understand. But you lure him into this washing machine, like Boker style, like the Joker, the Boker. And you push him in there. We clean him up. And we get him, and he either he could be a good guy or he won't like it, and we'll threaten him with drowning. And he'll tell us what we need in order to get an advantage with Pasta to Peter. He's an orc. That's my thought. I don't think you could fit an orc in a washing. You got to get a real big washing machine. Yeah, I, I, part of my plan is to find one, and it doesn't. It could be a big tub. I don't know. You're gonna be looking all day. I don't know about it. Listen, okay, there's got to be. There's like areas where they do industrial cleaning. Where they like the big the container store? I'm sure would have a big enough pot that we could put hot water and soap in. Okay, you're so you're, you're thinking narrow here. I think you're thinking the big narrow. Picture you want to just go and fuck around and fuck around and clean the dirtiest guy in Arkney, the, the butt baby himself. Yeah, I got close enough last time, so I think I'm just gonna double down on that. Get him real clean. Either he's gonna be a good guy after that, or he's not gonna like it, and we can make him do what we, we want him to do. Okay, um, what are you gonna do about? The gluttony guy you were talking about. What's the plan there? Yeah, at the same time that's happening, I'll be talking to gluttony. Maybe I, that'll make him more liable to what I want him to do and not what he wants to do to me. Anyway, I'm just going to see how I roll with the punches there. But I'm going to do both at the same time, and you're going to be my backup. Sounds fair. I hope you are. Yeah, see, all's well that ends well. How nice. You can go get monked up with Caesar. Okay. Uh, so they walk out. And it's just Frank in the room. Frank looks at his watch. I probably should be uh, there by now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I'm on my way. Okay, I so... I get in the cab as Phil. I walk down through the lobby as, as Phil. Hey, there are cheers and excitement when you walk by. That's Phil! That's Phil! Oh, yeah! Yeah, fuck my wife! Fuck. Yeah! Yeah, I love I'm, that I'm guy. I'm fist bumping people. Yeah. I'm walking down... Oh yeah, everyone's so excited, dude. I hop in a car and I head to the, the studio. Okay, you guys- Where is the debate? So the debate's gonna be at City Hall. Interesting, okay. Right I on. don't know. Uh, so you guys disperse. That's what happens. I wanna pick up with Alfonso. All right, so Alfonso's walking with little Ronnie on his back. Uh, I pull up my phone real quick. I I don't know where, um, I'm trying to find Lionel, so I'm like texting Lionel, hey, where you at? Like, YWA. <laughs> um, was it Lionel who got his knee eaten? Who got his kneecaps eaten out? It was one of them. It was either him or, um, Gary. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm... Yeah. 
They were like trying to eat each other. It was crazy. I think Gary ate Lionel's knee. I think that's it. Yeah, so, I think so too. Lionel picks up. Oh, he like calls? Okay. Hey, Liz. Yo, dog. What's going on? Hey, Yo, what's, what's going on, man? I'm in the hospital. You're in the hospital? What? Why are you in the hospital? I got my knees ate. Don't got no knees no more. Did you get your knee? Who was eating your knee? You know that cabbie Gary? Yes! Why? Why? It's something about a baby. All right, they shook a baby oh, a little too hard. He, he oh, my no, knees. don't tell me. Was Caesar there? Caesar was there. Caesar was there, and this oh, baby gosh. made, me, oh, made no. Gary eat my knees. I didn't want it to happen, but it happened. Okay, wait, wait. Like, I mean, now, are we just talking like he just, like, bit into your knee? Or are we talking like a shark attack, like your knee's gone? I, my left kneecap is completely suctioned up, buddy. That's gone. My right kneecap's fine. But he did chew on and it, like, walk. three times. I mean, no. Can I put you in a wheelchair? Can you play guitar? Is what I'm asking you. Is, is, does the hospital have wheelchairs? Because they're telling me they're out and they, they want me to just walk to my car. Yeah. Chairs, it's a hospital! <laughs> okay, well, I, I'm sure we can find one somewhere. Listen, I, buddy, this is my hour of need and I need you, my friend. Hey. How, how much you've been how much you've been practicing Love Me Sexy because this is the fucking time. I think I can at least play half of it. That's <laughs> all I need. All right. Listen, I'm going to come pick you up. I don't know. I'm going to need like a, I guess I need a ADA van or something. I, I need you to come to the skyline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm coming. I'm on my way. You, well, okay. you send somebody to pick me up. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send someone to get you with a wheelchair yeah. and I'll meet you there. Not Gary. Don't send Gary. Not Gary. For sure not. I'm sure that there's plenty of other kinkus. I, I'll send Cyrus. How about that? Okay. Good idea. Good idea. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. You hang up. Text Cyrus real quick. It happens. Um, All right. So he's on his way. What other preparation? Are you doing this at the Skyline? Yeah. I want to know. Because it, it's like a casino, right? You know how they have, like, in Vegas, a lot of those, like, super tall like towers and stuff they have like a lookout place or like a thing where they do like bungee jump i want to get to like if there's either like a point above the penthouse or just like the tallest point like a lookout basically to just like look at the city you I'm, know it's called the skyline there's got to be yeah, something like that. you can totally there's like a, a spherical room of windows kind of like the space needle almost very uh, at the very top yeah and then also you can go to the roof if you want to be more private maybe. Okay, yeah. Oh, is, oh yeah i need to be somewhere like the open space the open air roof is perfect no. all right the roof okay so that, i mean that's where i'm gonna go so until so i'm just waiting on lionel to show up and then i'm gonna take him in an elevator up there about five minutes come by and he gets wheeled in by cyrus does he have his guitar and his pick <laughs> yeah totally I told him they have to play okay yeah Hey Cyrus, thanks for dropping him off. I appreciate it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Gary. Um, I don't know if you want to look into that and see how he's doing. It's he's your boss, but you know. Frankly, I don't give a shit about Gary. Okay, you're, you're your own guy, self-made man. I get it. All right, but thank you so much for yeah. dropping him off. I like. I tip him. You, wow, three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on, I give him like 20 planks or something like that, like generous. I can help a guy out. Okay, like I thought you guys were rich now, $20. Okay. Whatever's generous, I don't know how much do you want, Cyrus. You want 50 planks? I just want to be left alone. He walks away. <laughs> Dude, what a relax. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> relax. <laughs> Someone's getting their Patriot bonus. <laughs> Uh, so uh, he, he leaves, dude. He don't care anymore. He's gone. <laughs> uh, you go up to you go up the elevator. I will him. I will him. Yep. <laughs> you, you make your way all the way to the top. Big Ronnie's still on my back. Yes, exactly. Oh my god, dude, uh, relax. <laughs> <laughs> You find yourself right. on the roof of the watch. skyline. <laughs> <laughs> I take this like, like the, I don't know, whatever side gives us the like most spectacular view of the city, and I just like have us there, and I um, I have Ronnie like I sit him down and I'm like we're like looking out over the the skyline, and I'm like, 
Ronnie, you see this view? It's, I mean, quite frankly, it's kind of fucking cool. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, I just kind of want to fucking, you know, like, climb out on the edge. You know how cats do, you know? I just want to fucking. Yeah. But, yeah. Hurt yourself, yeah. Listen, uh, this, this is, <laughs> this view used to be, like, divided <laughs> up between all these people. But, you know, over the course of the past couple months, uh, we have consolidated this. This is all just us, the Patriots. You get that, Ronnie? And you being the big Ronnie that you are, you are one of the higher ups in our organization. Wow. So you think like I, I could like one day own own the whole thing? Like Caesar already told me I'm part of his main crew. I mean, hey, you just gotta <laughs> put yourself out there, you know? What a bitch. And I look over at Lionel <laughs> and I'm like, Lionel, why don't you start playing whatever you can? Lionel has a sense of humility to him that he kind of didn't have beforehand. He losing a kneecap has kind of really made him reckon with himself. And he takes this he takes the neck of the guitar and pulls it in close and you see him just strum softly, right? At first, and he slowly gets more and more into it. And then right now I'm going to roll for there performance. There we go. Let me see if I have something that can, like, help this guy out. Or, I don't know if I have, like, enhanced ability on my spell list or anything. So this I is what... So. Look, I don't know if you can see the dice. It's is a, that a crit what, fail? It's is a it? critical failure. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So this he... poor guy. He's he starts playing and he goes... Boom! And drops the shard. <laughs> and it just clatters to the ground oh. in front of you. I pick it up and I'm like, Ugh, Lionel, I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. I, I know you're hurting. I know you must be in pain. Did they have you on like pain meds or something like that? I know you're probably not able to put up your best performance right now. It's just hard, man. I mean, sometimes it's just like not so easy. <laughs> I get that. He's at one knee for an hour. <laughs> all right well i was kind of open maybe to have some like instrumental music playing over this but really i think all i need is this shard i'll give this right back to you soon here buddy alfonso like looks up and he like holds the shard in his hand and he's like looking out over the city and he tells lionel i mean he tells uh lionel and ronnie he's like listen guys we are the patrons we own this town and something you guys might not know about the Patriots is, you know, I get it that, you know, you know, we've got like Frank and Caesar and Radio and Vinny. They've all been massive. They're part of the organization. And quite frankly, I joined pretty late. But uh, I just want to let you guys know that the guy that was able to get us through most of these key situations was me. I was the one that leaked the location of the lamp to freaking um horse face to be able to find it i was the one who resurrected frank whenever he died i was the one that freaking when caesar went down in the fight against sticky uh against uh smiley riley i brought him back to life just enough to be able to live ahead and then i freaking eliminated the stomach make a performance There's been check so many me. things all right as you're talking Should get advantage. He's cooking. Fifteen. I'll, I'll use a flash of genius. I have to to make it a dirty twenty. Ooh. Okay. A dirty twenty. That's dude. That's hardcore. Uh, the shard in your hand starts glowing as you speak, and Ronnie's like, "And I did it too. I fucking did that. I killed I Saint Dark Morton. Yeah. You don't understand. That guy was being uh, lifted up by the powers of a devil." And do you know what they call someone that's able to rival a devil, Ronnie? A fucking god. That's me? A fucking god. Yes. Uh, Ronnie's like grunting. He's so happy. Uh, and <laughs> like he's like cheering and shit. And uh, he, he says something along the lines of, Yeah, we're, we're the real patriots. Us, you and me, man. Fuck those other guys. That's right. <laughs> if we're not demigods, we are gods ourselves. And do you know what happens when gods need to be lifted up? They summon... They're freaking angels to protect them whenever they need to be lifted up. I don't need this to be able to cast my spells to save me. If we were to jump off this roof right now, our angels would come and save us from falling to our deaths. 
Let's do it. Willing to join me, Ronnie, as we cheat. <laughs> <laughs> the rolls. Ronnie, he looks at the edge and he goes, "If you if you jump first, I'll definitely jump." <laughs> Be my pack and we'll jump together. You told me you're willing to die. Ready, come me right now. Make a persuasion check on that. <laughs> What a menace. <laughs> 16, he goes, all right, like, turn around. I guess I'll climb on your back real quick, but, like... All right, all right. Yeah, but jump belly first. <laughs> I got you. Okay. I, I was kind of wanting to fall backwards, but, you know, I'll, I'll do a belly flop. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to work at all. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> With Lionel's reaction. He, yeah, what's he... <laughs> he's on pain meds. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think maybe that's what you should do. <laughs> you see Alfonso gets up onto like the edge and he just looks out over the city. And then he closes his eyes and then falls forward with Ronnie on his back. As you fall, this shard in your hand sparks to life. And you're falling through the air, right? And you see almost like a hologram appear before you, also falling with you. Um, Michael, can you kind of describe how River's Rain used to look? I don't really remember. I think he had like, uh, I know he had long, longer hair. Um, I think it was blue. blue? I think he had no, blue hair. Blue I had two blue, blue hair was another. Oh yeah, they were both blue hair? I think they were, dude. I think I had some stupid bit about them both having blue hair. Okay, so you see River's Rain. He's got uh, dark brown hair. It's long, but he's got like blue tints as if he's like aged a little bit. Like he's got blue on the very edges. Sharp jaw. Yeah, sharp Deep jaw. Blue eyes. He's got kind of a Huge beard. Hog. You can see it through his robe. <laughs> yes. He's aged a bit from where Michael last saw him, but you're watching this fucking shard, this hologram fall with you. And finally it clicks. There is a consciousness on this shard. And it is a fraction of pride of River's reign. And as you're falling, he's like, dude, what are you doing? He's trying to talk to you. Yes. And then the butterfly that I like had programmed before comes out of my chest. And then as a reaction, I programmed it to cast Featherfall on us. Ooh, okay. Um, it does. So it just doesn't. And then we just start floating down. Yeah. Because I remember my homunculus servant as a reaction, it can cast spells whenever I command it to. Okay. The second you start feather falling, uh, this fucking shard, his eyes widen. And then the shard grows even brighter. And you see a beam like fucking shoot through this hologram's chest and flash. And suddenly Alfonso, you're still falling. But you blink. Slowly, like super yes. slow. Yes. And when you open your eyes, you're you fucking just <laughs> on the ground, but you're in a grassy field. Is Ronnie there with me or is it just me? Ronnie's there, but he's like he's like you look over and he's like dizzy and he's like unconscious from the fall. Hey Ronnie, wake up. I think we made it to the the, the mirror dimension. He's not waking up. He's Odd asleep. Thing. He's unconscious right now. Um, Bonds is looking around. Hello, is anybody there? You hear a rustling in a tree above you. Oh snap! Hello, is this Pride or Mr. Rain? I was trying to come into contact with you, sir. Are you there? Oh wow, a visitor. It's been a long time, my friend. And you see, like. Uh, a part in the leaves and you see a face and it looks a lot like the Lionel Rain you just met but significantly older he's got a big bushy long beard his hair is is grayed uh he's wearing like a tie-dye shirt as if he's kind of like in like a hippie phase now he's old he's 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 past his prime by far and he looks at you what brings you here I came to talk with you Wow. Uh, yes, I, I sought you out. Listen, there, there's 
There's a lot of devil stuff going on in this town, so quite frankly, I thought maybe I would need the help of a god oh, to shit. be able to take them on. Dude, get in this tree. Get in this tree, quick. What? What? Climb, cl 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 I scurry up the tree. What? Hey, what about? I, I grab. Yeah. I grab Ronnie, put him on my back, and then climb up. Cool, cool. Okay. Uh, and you guys kind of like tuck away on like this branch near the trunk. And hey, dude, what are we doing here up in this tree? Oh, look. We gotta be quiet, okay? Let's talk. We can talk. But trust me, we had to be quiet here. Have you ever been here before? Uh, no. Quite frankly, no. This is Eden. It's considered a, a prison for for devils. <laughs> this is Eden. Okay, we're in a tree right now. Uh, I've been kind of stuck here for a long time. Okay, and it's not really easy to contact me. Uh, I think maybe the shard you were holding maybe acted as like a satellite almost and like boosted my uh, my signal so I was able to contact you finally. That's not what I was banking on. Hey, you're a prideful motherfucker. So what's up? I mean, well, what are you here for? I need something to help give me an edge, as it were, versus these, I don't know if I can say it, the, the D word in this realm. I need something that can help us out. Because well, otherwise, I think we're about to get fucked. Okay, well, tell me something, Fonzie. Who are you willing to kill for these powers? Um, that's tough. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't realize that was. I guess yeah. These type of packs, they're, they're deals, right? I'm just fucking with you. I mean, dude. I'm just, I'm just messing. Oh, with you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I just wanted to see what you would say. Yeah, totally. No, you don't have to kill nobody. What? I mean, just oh, you impressed okay. me, man. I mean, I mean, look. It's honestly, it's been a long time since I've, I've met anybody. Okay, I'm jumping at the heels to make a deal with you. So, so are you like? I, I'm so sorry. Have you just been like having conversations with ourselves? You haven't had a talk with another person in, in hundreds of years. Uh, I've just been trying to stay alive. Quite frankly, I mean, there's demons everywhere. I mean, there, there, there's the devils, and then there's the snake. And we uh, trust me, you don't want to fuck with either of those guys. Okay, so. Uh, okay. Yeah. Are you trying to get out of here? Like, is there anything I could do in the future to, like, help you get out of this place? Or do you want to be here? Uh, no, I need out. I, I need to help the okay. world. Yeah, but, I mean, no one's opened the, the doors to Eden for thousands of years. So, I mean, honestly, it doesn't seem likely, but if you can ever... So, wait, you're telling me if they were to open, if they were to open, then you could, like, use that and get out as an opportunity? Provided the doors weren't blocked by, you know the devil's already trying to get out or like someone on the other side. Yeah, totally. I could get out. Oh, okay. Listen, maybe just be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll look out, but let me, you have the shard. I'm, I'm holding it in my hand right now. Yeah. I want, I, I want to give you power. Okay. I like you Fonzie. Truth is, I, I've been watching you. And I see you. Okay, you're my last hope here. Okay? Because pretty soon shit's going to get bad. And if we don't do something soon, if I don't have a way to influence the world, if I don't have a way out of here, then I'm fucked. Royally so. So are you All willing right. to work for me? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I mean, quite frankly, I need your help too because I, it seems like we're kind of both in a sticky situation and we need each other's help. How about you become my beacon? You'd be an intermediary between this world and yours. Devils use them all the time. Uh, as a god, I've never tried it myself, but I mean, honestly, I, I don't see why it wouldn't work. And that way, next time, it'd be easier to contact me in the future. That'd be great. I'm sure you would like someone to talk to. And I could funnel some powers into you. You could have what you need to survive escape your situation but the thing is you got to come save me i need out of here sure. do you know where the gates of eden are are they in titan they are in titan or around there yeah mm. that's also where the four pillars are mm. so okay. i'll tell you what what powers are you asking for me well I was thinking about what relates to pride, 
and I thought about the phrase being blinded by ambition. What if you gave me the ability to either blind or deafen someone by thoughts of their own grandeur? Like if I was to say, if someone was feeling very hyped about themselves, I could make them see only that. They couldn't take in their surroundings and they'd be vulnerable. There's a spell that I currently can't learn called blindness or deafness. So if I could learn that, that'd be pretty neat. Or mm -hmm. if just as an ability. I'll tell you what. When you awaken, you'll have this ability. Just, you have to touch somebody with your left arm. And when you do it, you can force this blindness or, and deafness on them. And as another effect, devil energy, devil magic won't work on you, at least in a mental capacity. Oh, that's great. You're my beacon now, Fonzie. I need you to find my fragments. All of them are in pro are in Titan. Oh, wow. They're not like all scattered over the earth. They're all in one place. For the most part. You go with like a metal detector and like find them. Unfortunately, there's a collector who's been hoarding them for a long time. The one you're holding now is the only one he's never been able to get. I assure so you I that. find this collector and, and grab him from him. Yes. I'll help you more once you get to Titan. As for now, this is all I can give you. You hear hey, a well, giant this a lot. hiss coming from down below. And he, you look at uh, Rivers Rain and he looks a little frustrated. As he stands up and starts stretching... Uh, you better get out of here, Fonzie. Shit's about to get hairy, okay? Oh, snap. How do I teleport? Do I just, like, slap myself awake or what? Uh, I'll handle that. Don't worry. And he touches you on the forehead. And right before he lets go, he says, I need you to survive, Fonzie. And he lets go, and you gasp awake. <gasps> uh, you're, on con you're on asphalt, on the road beneath the skyline. Wake up. Yes. And you look at your left arm. It's encrusted in ice. And when you, uh, like, make a fist, the ice shatters and falls. And your hand just has, like, a slight magical glow to it now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the way this works is if you grab somebody and touch them, you can enforce this power onto them. How long okay. does it last? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. How long does the spell last? I, I think it's a minute. So, the way that the spell works is it's a... Um, it's a con save, but I was wondering if, like, since we're flavoring it, that they're kind of, like, being obscured by their own pride, that maybe it's, like, a wisdom save, if we could, like, flavor it that way. I like that. Okay, so that happened, and you wake up, and little Ronnie, he's, like, squirming to wake right next to you. And he goes, what, what the fuck just happened, Fonzie? Little Ronnie, you good? Oh, god damn, I got a headache. I'll tell you what, Ronnie, it worked. Oh, man. Hey, you're alive, buddy. I told you would be all right. We're gods now. Yeah, that's right, buddy. Just don't do that again unless I'm there, all right? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, and just real quick, I'm, I'm going to text in the group chat, like, just wanted you guys to know I love you and appreciate all you guys. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And that's it. Frank is sitting in the cab, and he goes, oh. What a sweet gesture. <laughs> uh, we're going to transition to radio now. So radio, where are you heading? Um, so radio's in a cab, uh, and she's just, like, she told, wh who's the cab driver? Is there it's anyone scary. that we know? It's Gary. Um, <laughs> hey, Gary, can you just uh, drive around for a little bit? I'm, I'm still figuring out where to meet up with. Uh... Yeah, of course. Uh, it's fucking, uh, uh. And he starts driving. Uh, and you're just looping around and around, and suddenly, uh, you get a phone call. I'm assuming you texted Hawthorne something. Yeah, I was about to say, I was, uh, yeah, I was going to text him. Hawthorne calls you. Radio, how are you, my friend? Okay, I'm ready. Yes, I was hoping you'd say that. And I, there's been a change of plans. I know I said you could bring me the shard tomorrow, but fortunately, I, I have to have it tonight. Uh, we have to make this switch tonight. I hope that's okay. 
That's... That's okay. Why do you sound so sad, Radio? Um... Just... Concerned. Radio... There's nothing to be concerned about here. Okay? You and Benny... I have a great deal of respect for you. As well as Fonzie, quite frankly. You guys... I've always gotten a sense that you guys have a pure heart. You have nothing to fear from me. I guess I'll have to take you at your word on that. Alright. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna send you a location now. Pull up there, okay? Okay. And don't bring anybody else. This is between us. Okay. Alright. Thank you, radio. I'll see you there. And she hangs up. Okay. Um, by the way, you have a couple texts from Sticky. They've been working on Benny's new body all day. It is done. It's oh, okay. Whenever you so, want. Is there like a video <laughs> of Sticky like sh like showing around the body since Radio yeah. can't be there? Yeah. Trying to with the bones. <laughs> we're trying to figure it out right now. Right, right now, Radio. We just can't. You know, we're we're getting it. We're set up. It'll be ready whenever you get it ready. So. Okay. All right. So she nods and. Uh, with that acknowledgement, she starts writing a note to um, catch up if, uh, Benny, I guess, to uh, anything that she wants to have him know, like uh, like the body, any things that's changed, um, and just start, like general information about things that have happened while he's been gone. Okay, and also like the steps in involving like, oh, you need the Boo Ricks cube from Pasta Pete. Right, order yeah, to exactly. It, that that expl explicitly, like, where all that documentation is held. Cause I'm sure Radio has been documenting all of it. Great. All right, and what do you do with this file, this information? Um, I just get, I'm holding it. I'm waiting to give it to Hawthorne because he will probably be the only one who can relay it. Okay. So, what happens is you start heading towards this location and... You pull up and you see like an abandoned like warehouse, small like old like res uh, old like shopping center or something. It it's abandoned, and you pull up. There's like a mechanic garage around the side, uh, and that's where he told you specifically to go. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I kind of want to do this a little later in the session, so we're gonna it's transition fine. back to Caesar now. So, Caesar, and I can do a check for it, but there's got to be a, a place where a man can get a, some hot water and soap in a big container. <laughs> there's no, like, chemical processing, uh, no, no, no industrial laundry facility. They're building uh, the Warforge at a laundry facility currently. What about the potion guy? Yeah, also Slippy. So he got big vats, big tubs? He's got cauldrons, a couple of cauldrons. Okay. Can can you tell me about the layout of this these cauldrons? Okay, so is my idea my idea is I'm gonna I'm gonna push him into one, so I can this could be in character. Is a cauldron gonna be something I can push someone into? Like, is there an elevated space and the cauldrons are kind of in, set in the ground? It's uh, uh he's probably got like two or three like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's got a large facility where he brews a lot of potions. Um, are you bringing your baby with you, or did you leave that with Mathilda? I left the baby at the skyline. I didn't give it to Mathilda. I just let it float around. Okay, yeah, he's hanging out at the I party. I left it in the lobby with Jenny. Yeah, she's yeah, with Jennifer. Totally. <laughs> so, so I do that. I, I go. I go to um, what's the potion? Again? Slippy. 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 Yep. I go to Slippy's. I thought his name was Slippy's Grass. Oh, that was Jeeves Leaves. No, that's Jeeves Leaves. There's another. There's another guy. Yeah. It's, I think it's Drip Town. Drip Town. Okay. Potions. Okay. I go to Drip Town. I walk in with um, mucked up behind me. What's going on? What time is it uh, right now? It's in, about in to game. be four. The debate's about to start. What time do you all close? Five. Yeah, y'all are closing now. And I flip the I flip the the open sign. Oh, I could have made like an hour more business. No, I'm, I'll be your business. I have money. Listen, that's not the problem. here. You have what I need. Potions, lots of it. 
You want a potion? Yeah, but particularly what they're made inside of. I imagine potions of this variety of quantity, you, you got some big vats. Ca- cauldrons, some would say. Yeah, cauldrons, totally. I've got like three or four of them, a couple of them in the ground, a couple of them above ground. That's perfect. No, I need the ones in there. Are any of them empty or have like a dish detergent? You know, car wash fluid. Uh, I do have a, like a degreaser. You got a degreaser? I got a degreaser for cleaning the cauldron specifically. I could put some in there now. They're all empty. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Let's get two of those set up, actually, and leave one full of just, um, you know, put some eggs in there. Okay. It's a, that's a backup one. I don't know how many eggs you got. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be mostly empty with a little bit of eggs. Kind but of listen, is. okay, friend. You're kind of, you're involved in this now, and the promise is a big payout. That should be enough for a businessman like yourself. We're going to put my friend. He's stinky. He's a drug addict. We're trying to clean him up. This is like an intervention where um, we don't do the traditional intervention things, but instead we get him real clean. If he fights us, we get him in some eggs. But mostly the plan is to get him real clean. You follow me so far? Yeah, okay. Yeah, naturally. Yeah, totally. So you... So you'll be able to do this for me. So if he comes and he starts swinging, you're not going to call the cops or, or make a problem for us, right? I mean, as long as you pay for all the damages and then some for my time, you know, I'll help you. It's exactly. And that, see, this that's what I love about businessmen here in Ark. Y'all get a bad rap. And yeah. all y'all really want is money. And you don't care who's willing to get hurt in the process. So I, that's I, what's going to happen. You can help us if you want for more money. But if, even if you stay to the side, you know, think of it as just a differential. If you get your hands dirtier... You know, we'll pay you more money, but it, it's up to you. Cool. Yeah, totally. Beautiful. Okay. So I go to Monked Up. I said, okay, we got the plan here. You, you understand what's going on? Yeah, I understand, but uh, Caesar, you mind if I talk to you for a second? Yeah, that's what we're doing now. Talk to me. Okay, look, um, <laughs> like, I'm sure you can lead Monked Up. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sure you can lead Peter the Putrid here uh, all ding dong day, but. Brother, I think he might have been following us. I think he might know about the skyline and stuff. I mean, you know. It was been telling him about that sort of stuff. I think, look, he said he was going to try to follow us. He said he was going to try to track us down. I don't like how this is smelling. Who, when he say that? I read your messages. He didn't say anything like that. He said he was going to find us. And he also, like, before I even left, he said he was going to follow us around. But I thought I lost him. I thought I lost him. He might be lost, you know, but oh. <laughs> Listen, I can tell I can tell you and Mr. Putrid here's got a got a history. You got a like a find my app on your phone or something that we can find at least look for where he is. Um I don't I, we're not that close. He wouldn't give me that information. Call him right now. Call him cuz he doesn't know you but you betrayed him. Because uh, honestly right now I think you have it, but if you call him, will he be honest with you about where he knows where you are? Sure. I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't be. I guess. I mean, I have been ignoring his calls all day. Can you I feel pre- like can you talk to him? I, pretend to be me. I can. Okay, listen. I can do that, but I need more history here. Y'all are lovers. Y'all no. kiss. Y'all done more than kissing yet. Or is why it, do you is think it like, that? Well, they won't. They. What gave you the, that? They, what they think? You listen. People don't put emojis next to someone's name <laughs> unless it means something. I have okay, emo- I've learned that. If I know anything about about primary school, <laughs> he calls it primary school. <laughs> okay, look, we got kind of close down there, but we're not. not it's nothing like that, obviously. <laughs> so it's still in there. Will they? Won't they? Stage. That no moves have been made. I mean, whatever. I guess. I'm asking you. No, you, tell me, you, you gotta tell me where the line is. It won't. Y'all, it y'all won't. close, which I know. I know what that means. He stinks, dude. He stinks. Okay, what do you want me to tell you? I don't want to kiss him. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call him. We're yeah. gonna lure him here. Yeah. And we're gonna get him cleaned up for you. Okay. Okay. If that's if that's really what's keeping you and him from being together, we're gonna take care of it. Okay. Uh. Okay. I'm. I'm just. <laughs> I just want to help you guys. That's all. I walk to the back where the quadrants are, and I, I call him from his phone. I'm calling Peter. What's going on? Why haven't you been answering <clears throat> us, you bitch? You've been calling me. Oh, I've been calling you all right. 
What the fuck, man? What the fuck? Where are you right now? You don't know where I am? We had a deal. I followed you to the skyline, and then I lost sight of you. Where the fuck I are you now? I can't, I can't believe you can't even keep your, your, your focus on me anymore. It used to be, you, you, I was all you could think about. That's not true. Why do you think that? <laughs> I can't, I can't even. I'll, I'll call you back. I hang up. You hear, before you hang up, you hear him turn to a, someone next to him, and he's like, he's fucking doing the weird thing again. He's, <laughs> and, then, and then that's what you hear as you hung up. Okay, he doesn't know we're here. So we got time to prepare. What? Let's think about how we're going to get this guy in this in this quadrant of degreaser. degreaser. It's, uh, we push him, maybe. I'm thinking that, too. I'm thinking... I'm thinking this man doesn't like me. I've tried to clean him before. I'm thinking maybe you we act like you captured me. And that's that's why you've been all big dramatic and it was a big show of love that you captured me for him and he's gonna get all the credit. Follow me so far. I follow you so far, but Caesar, let me be real with you, man. <laughs> he, this guy, Peter the Putrid, he he's a butt baby. There's no cleaning that. There's no cleaning that he was molded in the in the orifice that it fucking is just filled with stink all the time. He wasn't stinky in the in the womb, is what I'm saying. We got to get him back to fetus. The stink penetrates all. He, he could he couldn't help the path that he took. Okay, he was he was born pure. Is all I'm saying. You can't give up on people like that, especially especially people you love. Mucked up. I just don't feel like, I, I mean, I kind of don't understand why you keep going with that angle. I feel like you could just, like, maybe, like, take it from, like, a truthful angle. And maybe, like, it might, like, feel a little more natural for me, maybe. You think if we come clean, he'll, he'll betray Pasta Pete, is what you're saying? Come clean about what? Like. That's me, what you're saying. You say we're coming at a truthful angle. What Truthful about what? I just, like, maybe if, like, we, like, we just, like. I'm. I don't love that guy. I don't have any emotions <laughs> for him. I don't know why you keep saying that. So maybe if like we just like, hey, like I used to kind of work for you. We didn't get along too well, but now I'm gonna kill you, and then we push him in. I don't know. That never works. I never listen. Okay, I'll <laughs> drop the love stuff. We'll we'll, we'll we'll tackle that in your next arc. Yeah, that's my right second now, arc. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> you cap. You we pretend like you captured me. And the, t the cauldron, it's full of acid, okay? It's, you know, flesh-eating bacteria, piranhas, whatever. Whatever he, whatever he thinks would be a good ending for me. And y'all get together, you know, you make amends, and, you know, maybe you were just saying this was to prove yourself or whatever. You know, that even bring love into it. And then and then as he's getting ready, and he's going to lord over me, I'm sure, he's, he's going to push me in. You push him in, I help you. We do one of those things where I get, where I get like, real low, and you push him, and he trips over me. You, you ever seen one of those? Yeah, okay, yeah, totally. Yeah, so I, like, get on my hands and knees, and you just push them. No, I, I'm on my hands, because like, I'm on my knees already, captured. I just get lower, and you push him over me. <laughs> what if he brings, like, another guy? Like, I heard him talking to another guy on the phone. Like, what if it's not It's not even just him? Like, yeah, we might get him a little clean, but then we get fucked? Mm, that's a good plan. That's a good idea. That's a good idea? <laughs> that's a good idea. Let's fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> No, so man. So we're back. We're back at the angle I wanted to take it from. I don't think you. I don't think you kind of understood me, there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He's gonna, bring another, he's gonna bring another guy to fuck him. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get what y'all get down with in the sewers. Let's go with your I plan. Like a, a with your <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Okay, listen. Hey, if he brings another guy, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay this guy more money. He's going to throw some sort of potion that's going to incapacitate him, okay? Okay, yeah. I think that's the only thing we can do. And then, hey, either case, we get him in the tub. I, again, I don't care if he gets clean. I, I've kind of passed that as well, but I feel like this will torture him enough that he'll do what we say, which is mostly what I want at this at this juncture. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, is there any other... See, I like the, the ideas you're bringing up. I don't like your commitment to him, but is there anything else you think we should be worried about? I don't know. Like you kept saying, he was gonna f fuck me. You don't think I gotta worry about that, do you? Well, I don't know what's on the table. I mean, it sounds like you were. I thought y'all were equals down there, but I guess there was a power dynamic. No, thing. yeah, I was definitely lower on the totem pole. Yeah, you're the bottom of it. 
bottom. Don't call me a bottom. <laughs> he would. He was topping you or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if that's how you want to see it, then yeah. So, okay, but I. We invite him over here now. As we start. Yeah, I feel like we do. Yeah, we, you say, and this time you're gonna say is that you captured me. We get all captured again. This is a big acid vat full of piranhas. We're gonna kill me in a ceremonial fashion. He doesn't like me. I tried to clean him before. And then we just do the whole switcheroo, you know, I, you know, and you push him and he's in there. Hopefully the other guy gets incapacitated during or be after that, you know, we'll be fine from there. Yeah, f totally fine. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, I just gotta, you, while you're talking to him, I'm gonna talk to this purveyor of fine potions. Okay, you walk over to him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I'm an earshot of, of Monked Up in case he says something odd, but, um, okay, businessman, there's a couple things to amend this plan. <laughs> Do you have anything that comes guts on top of these cauldrons, like something heavy, something like a, a big round piece of wood? You know, I'm sure you don't want flies in there when you're bubbling, right? Like, Ooh. you got something like that? Got lids. Yeah, I want like a lid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got like I three, one of those. I got three lids over there. How do you get them on there? You just heave them on there? Is there like a suspension system? Is there like a crane that we could have the lid on top, like above the cauldron, and it can drop when we say? So they got these crazy new things called handles, and I just pick it up by the handle, <laughs> and then uh, I like just put it right on there. They're strong as hell. That's a big, that's a big <laughs> lid to handle. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're hard. They're hardwood. They're not that hard, man. You can pick up that handle. <laughs> So I need you to do one of two things. I don't know if you can do both. There is a potential that, you know, my recovering addict friend is going to bring his, his drug dealer. You know, he's a bad dude. We don't want him around. I need, you, I need you not only to put a lid on this guy when I push him into this um, rehab fluid, but I need you to incapacitate his drug dealer. Well, which one do you prioritize? Like, which one would you rather I do first? Do I still have those little pellets that get people eaten? Yeah. Get the lid on first. I have a backup plan in case the drug dealer getting taken care of is a problem. Sound good. Sound so good lid first, then worry about drug dealer. And if you can't, uh -huh. I got a backup plan. But what me. if I'm like not strong enough? Cause like really like, I mean like. You just said you did this by yourself to like, you threw him over. No, I throw no. like lids on top of fucking barrels all the time, but there's never people in there. Like one, I, I might have like a rogue frog jump up against the lid and you know, maybe a couple bubbles, push it up a little bit. Well, really, I just put, like, a rock on there, and it's nothing, man. But, like, you, want, I could sit on it, but, like, still, like, if this guy's real strong, he might just yeah, come can up. You, can, you grab, can you throw the lid over, get two of your heaviest rocks, and just lay up there? Okay, so pick up this heavy lid, put it on the <laughs> container, walk. <laughs> you want me to walk over here, grab one rock, bring it over, put it down. I have, the, I have the rocks over. right next to you, so as soon as you put the lid on... You're grabbing these rocks and you're jumping on. Okay, but like, dude, that's like, I mean, like, if we're just talking, like, in terms of turn action, that's like three turns. <laughs> Listen, my idea is that this is all happening in one fell swoop of a turn. <laughs> you gotta set up some kind of pulley system, maybe, like, we really set up a system and then we have, like, the the lid and maybe the rocks are already pulled up on top of the lid and then maybe we just drop it all at once maybe do you that's why i asked about a crane earlier do you have anything that can suspend i got a rope heavy lid i got a rope and then there's these beams that we could tie it over <laughs> so, so can you be can you do that and then be like in the shadows with this rope as soon as this guy gets pushed in you let go of the rope it it dunks on him so that's the plan. You're not going to be next to it. You're going to be kind of in the eaves holding this rope. And then as soon as you see him flop in there, you let it go. Yeah, okay. I kind of feel like maybe like if this guy was your friend, you wouldn't be doing all this, though. Addiction addiction makes him not the friend I can, uh, not the yeah. man I became friends with. You understand? I'm trying yeah. to get him back to, to what womb is, level almost. What is it, Flamingo? I got a friend hooked on that shit. It's not no, that's one of them. That's, the worst thing is that's that was the gateway one. Yeah, worse from there. They always say Flamingo is the gateway drug. Probably the dark <laughs> bark then, huh? Oh, as long as he doesn't get on that sapphire, that shit's crazy. <laughs> but uh, let's get ready. Let's. I'm going to start doing it. Uh, let's get to work. And he walks over and starts assembling some stuff. I think next we're going with Frank to the debate real quick. If that's happening, then Caesar's taking a short rest. He, he's 
We're in the planning stages right now. For okay. This game. Cool. We now pick up with Frank, who is walking into the debate as uh, Philip K. Fuck. Set the scene for me. What's it like as I pull up out of, and get out of this taxi? Working class entrance, by the way. Oh. Out of a taxi cab. Yeah. You you walk up. People are cheering. There's like a red carpet uh, that leads to like the backstage that you can enter. Uh, and then uh, there's also a front entrance that some people can go through that will like, you know, funnel into like an assembly hall with a stage and everything. Um, you can go through either entrance. I don't really care. How long is there before the debate? You got like probably 20 minutes at this point. So rather than walking through the backstage entrance like a... Like someone who doesn't want to interact. He, Philip is going around all the zombies in Kinku in the, in the crowd that turned out for him. And he's, he's chatting it up. He's mingling for 20 minutes. Dude, everyone's shaking your hands. Everyone's so excited to see you, especially uh, uh, like between the Kenku and the zombies. And one, one zombie pulls you in really close. And uh, you realize it's actually Caesar's dad. And uh, he pulls you in real close. And he's like, hey, man, look. Uh, I don't want you to stress about anything today. We got some zombies. They're running the perimeter. We're making sure everything goes well. No one's going to fuck with you today, boss. We got your back. And listen, hey, you passed that law, man. Zombies are people too, okay? You're, you're fucking doing this for us, man. Right on, brother. Absolutely. You're hey, the best, listen, bro. I don't know why you felt like you needed to scare the perimeter, but uh, I appreciate it nonetheless. Uh, shit. Have you heard from Caesar today? How do you know? Do we? Do you know? No. We, oh, that's right. We met. Yeah. Have we met? We probably met. I thought we did. Have we? We might have. You, I mean, I'm just, if I'm you, misremembering. You told him that Philip K. Funk was like your guy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, listen. No. Why would you? Why would you? Not to, yeah. I gotta go. <laughs> See you later, <laughs> boss. Hey. You uh, make a uh, in, uh, perception check as you're walking away. Okay. Uh, fuck. Seven. Yeah, uh, you walk away. Nothing happens. So uh, y you leave and you walk into the entrance. Everyone's so excited to see you, dude. Philip K. Fuck. Philip K. Fuck. There is some kind of question in uh, some mumblings throughout the hall. Where is Pig? What's going on with Pig? Why is he not here? It hasn't really broken the news that he's dead yet. Yeah, because no one found the body. We exactly. exposed it. Okay. Okay. People are hoping he'll show last minute, but so far he's not been here. I walk back. Is there like a production team? I'm assuming this is televised. Do I have to like go backstage and get mic'd up? And yeah, all that? they start powdering your face. You got a team specifically for you. They're hot micing you, um, setting you up, and they're like, "Okay, Mr. Fuck, if you have any questions whatsoever, let us know. We're gonna help you out." Uh, the moderator is uh, Bon Orange. He's gonna help you out. He's a good guy. Okay, he uh, he's just gonna ask you some simple questions. And listen, hey. I am the He's prize. slapping himself in the face really hard to warm up. Dang. Okay. Wow. A little extra. <laughs> um, look, I on the prize. Okay. Look, you got this, bro. Between us, it, it's fucking Ellis out there, bro. This loser is Is nobody. he backstage also getting mic'd up? No. Oh, he's already out there? Ellis is going to be streaming in. And, and some someone tells you this. Yeah, Ellis isn't showing up. Not physically. He's going to be streaming in. Yeah. He's got a, we got a, like a, a camera set up. He's going to like do the whole robot thing. Who, who, who allowed this? He's the mayor. He gets to make that call. Well, I mean. I mean shit. Between you and me, uh, they say he's, like, in hiding right now. Something's going down. Uh, he keeps talking about, like, the swamp, you know, the, the patriots. Be between you and me, I don't believe his ass, okay? He's talking out his ass. Uh, but I mean, the, the facility, they okayed it. It's going to go down like that, uh, unfortunately for you. Well, thanks for letting me know. No one will wish my... I <laughs> Fucking, I'm sending an angry text to little Ronnie <laughs> for not telling me that he wasn't going to be, <laughs> he wasn't going to be there. As you, uh, as you text little Ronnie that, you get a text back saying, oh, by the way, Ellis isn't going to be there tonight. And neither is Pig. <laughs> Classic. Okay. That happens. Uh, so now what? You're going to go ahead and head out stage? I'm heading out onto the stage. Okay. We set the tone as, uh... You walk out on stage. 
Little Ronnie, um, he's fiercely texting. Uh, by the way, your app is about to go live. Whenever you, the Jennifer's waiting for you to give the signal on stage to, to promote it. So you have to bring up this app and talk about how you're going to use it and stuff like that while you're on stage. Uh, What's the app called? Town, Town Squared. Squared. I can't say I was, I forgot about that. This is the thing I'm doing. <laughs> All right. All right. Cheers it. as you walk on the stage. That's my guy. Oh, yeah. He's going to fuck the police. He's going to fuck everybody. Philip K. <laughs> fuck. You I'm come out. I'm air humping. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I have gained so much support so quickly. <laughs> I you, love it. You walk out onto the stage. All right, everybody. This is Bon Orange talking. He's the moderator. All right, everybody, uh, with our contestants now on stage, and he points to the monitor showing Ellis. Uh, we're going to get this debate started pretty soon. Uh, just right now, we want some opening remarks from each of the candidates. Uh, we're going to start with you, Fuck. Well, you know, I don't think it requires very many remarks. Uh, we got one candidate who decided to show up for the people of Arkney. And I mean each and every person. Not just the normal ones. <laughs> <laughs> There's Here some oohs and ahs, a few boos, actually, from that remark. And I say, look where he is. Nowhere to be found. And where's Mr. Pig? That's the question, Arkney. I have no further remarks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ellis, his screen pops to life. And you see Ellis. He looks kind of a little frantic. He's like, Dear people of Arkney, okay? I wish I could be there today. I really wish I could. But the truth is, my friends, Arkney is under siege from miscreants who like to think they own the city and run the law. You know? These patriot motherfuckers have threatened not only me, but hundreds of businesses throughout Arkney. And they also just so happen to be one of the main donators to Philip K. Fuck's personal campaign. Okay? The Philip, the, the, the Patriots are funding him. So while we answer these questions today, I just issue a challenge to my competitor, Mr. Fuck, to denounce these criminals once and for all on the stage and say you have nothing to do with them. Maybe we'll buy it. Thank you, Dom. Or bomb, whatever the fuck your name is. I'm calling you orange from now on. Okay. <laughs> you should have to. All right. After that first round, do, you, do I get to roll like performance or something for my remarks? Yes, yes, yeah. Let's, let's see. I'll, I'll roll against it. He crit failed. Holy shit! So did I. Oh, uh, let's do. Well, a, I got an eight though. I got an eight. Okay, hey, reroll. Let's do, let's do a reroll. He crit I think. the other way, nat 20. Oh, that's lame. This sucks. Well, I'm not going to nat 20. Who knows? 10. He gets a lot. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Technically, I fucked up. I roll Oh, no, because it's a crit fail. It still uh, exceeds that one ability oh, okay. I have. Never mind. Nope, I'm still fucked. Okay. S sorry, sorry. No charisma. No sauce. <clears throat> I mean, you you got a little juice with your comments and stuff, but the thing is, Ellis is the mayor. He's the incumbent. He's got a little more pooling weight than you do at this point. And, yeah, I mean, based on his remarks, people are excited. People are hyped. And just so you know, if you don't address the Patriots throughout your debate, there's going to be a lot of disappointment based on because he rolled so high for this performance. Got it. All right, now that everyone's ready, it's about time we start with the first question. Uh, so, uh, you, Philip K. Fuck. That's where I want to start. With the recent string of disasters throughout Arkney, a lot of people are wondering, should the people of this town come first? Before Kenku and before zombies? I mean, public opinion is that they should be the first ones receiving aid. The first people receiving attention. Your campaign clearly disagrees. You would give me some input on that. 
Oh, no, I don't want you to put words in my campaign's mouth. I don't necessarily disagree. Here's the thing. You're thinking that some people deserve to be helped more than other people. And you're accusing me of saying that the Kenku and the zombies need to be helped more than others. And all I'm saying is everybody deserves to be helped. The same. And if I was the leader of Arkney, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the disaster, just know that Philip K. Fuck would stand for each and every one of you. Dang. Equally. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do best three out of five. So the first one with... Here, you, you need a second? Yeah, give me a second. You're one, good. I'm sorry. Okay. You're good. So here's Keep what up. we're going to do. Best three out of five. First one to receive three successful uh, charisma checks will essentially be the winner of this campaign. You're both going to... I'm going to ask a question. You're both going to give answers. Uh, I might add like a, a, a disadvantage or advantage based on how you guys answer. But basically, first one to get three successful charisma checks or persuasion checks, intimidation, whatever you want to do. I'm doing persuasion. Okay. Whoever gets first to three will essentially become the winner to this debate and will get a plus five to the roll for the election. Okay. So there's big stakes on the line here. Okay. And that, that's, the elect, that's the role that's going to determine everything. Because uh, for those who don't know, at the end of this election cycle, when the election actually goes through, uh, based on everything you've done, you're going to get a bunch of pluses and minuses modifiers. And whoever like, gets the highest role wins the whole thing. Or you have to hit above a certain benchmark to become the mayor. And Got this it. will give you a plus five if you're successful. Your Got answer it. is fantastic. The crowd goes wild. All right? Real straight down the middle. People love it. Uh, now for Ellis. Ellis, I'm going to ask you the same question. Uh, do you think the citizens of Arkney should become come before the Kenku and the zombies? Ellis, he stutters for a second. And then he steals his nerves and he says, You know what, Orange? Absolutely, I believe that. The Kenku, they're criminals. They come into our city, they take our jobs, and they fucking, they dirty up the place. I, I, I didn't want to say it, but I said it. Okay? It's the truth. It's the truth. All right? Wow. Wow. Okay. He wants to make comments. Here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. Just recently, a spokesperson for the Patriots came to my door and asked me, Straight to my face to go against my morals. And you know what I told him, Orange? You know what I told him, people of Arkney? I said, fuck you. I will never pass a law allowing zombies or Kenkus to vote. And you know why? Because they are not citizens of Arkney. They are nobodies. Zombies are dead. They lost the right to vote. I'm sorry. It's a fact. All right? You want to bring a fucking skeleton into the voting box with you next? Huh? How about you bring a fucking a, a cat with a, like a cowboy hat and some pistols? Yeah, no, that doesn't work for me. They can't vote. Sorry, Arkney. Sorry, Worm. Okay, and that's what I gotta say about that. Uh, oh, Fred, Philip, how, how about you? Uh, you rebuttal to that because he, he kind of called you out on that one. What do you gotta say? Thanks, thanks, Bond. That's what I have to say. My opponent wants to get in the mud. I'll be a little piggy. <laughs> <laughs> if he wants to talk about the Patriots, let's talk about them. Now, you all might be wondering why Mr. Pig, the former frontrunner in this race, is not on the stage. Uproar, as you say that. Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> Let me tell you. Mr. Pig and Mayor Ellis, I've been engaged in a criminal conspiracy to rig this election against me. To stop me from bringing equality and peace to Arkney. And the Patriots are the organization that's proven it. And I'm, I'm waiting. How does the crowd react? The crowd, the it's it kind of falls silent a lot quicker than you would have expected. Because, first of all, the, okay. the Patriots them. Them. aren't a real known organization. This is kind of the first time they've been put on like a public display, really. 
The Patriots are a small, covert group of individuals, highly trained, highly qualified, who have been undercover fighting crime in Arkney for the last several months. You might all remember the Mancuso Villa, the rumors of the of the Patriots. Fake really. news. Okay. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, long story short, Patriots were doing a little digging into my opponent, Mr. Ellis. And what we found was that Mr. Ellis wired a significant amount of money to Mr. Pig. You might be asking yourselves now, why would he do something like that? I never did anything like that, you motherfucker. Shut your mouth. And he, he's, Mom, he's mad. Mom. Hey, oh, hey, look, I'm Ellis, my time. I'm going to need you to, you didn't need to quiet down. He has his time. You can speak after. Sit down. And, and you, you kind of get the sense he's being a little harder on Ellis than he's being on you. You're not really sure what this is and why this is. But, I mean, you guys know that it's because he's of Caesar. A ridiculous amount of time. <laughs> yeah, Caesar did his part here. Nice. Okay. Well, listen, we have the bank statements to prove it. Uh, now I will be releasing all of the incriminating information, including a video that will prove the allegations that I'm about to make on a free and independent platform yet to be announced. Stay tuned. Anyways, so what I was saying about the Patriots, we found bank statements wiring money to Mr. Pig a couple of days ago, and what I what we discovered is that there was a secret agreement made for Mr. Pig to drop out of the race, endure, get, get clear, skip town, take the money. This is a lot of money I'm talking that got wired, people. I'm talking more money than you got in your bank account. For real. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing, now I'm, doing, I'm trying to do a stand-up bit. I'm, I've got a mic stand. I'm leaning on it. Dang. <laughs> <You know>? Anyways. <laughs> that plays well. Anyway. <laughs> plays well for the audience. Anyways, all I'm saying is I got a lot of conspiracies to unfold here. So if he wants to talk about the Patriots, we can talk about it. I've, I've taken up too much time here. I'm, gonna, I'm sure he's got some bullshit. He wants yeah. to respond. Yeah. I say bullshit, Don or Bon. You, you, I mean, you can curse all you want. We're going to bleep it out and post. Uh, anyways, uh, listen, Ellis, your turn. Respond. And Ellis, uh, he pulls the mic and he's like, Lies! I hear <laughs> lies! Okay? That never happened. Big dog, okay? <laughs> Philip K. Fuck wants to come out of nowhere. Act like he runs the town. He says the Patriots are an elite group of fucking freedom fighters, people who are fucking helping people? Yeah, okay, watch this. And you, we all turn and you you see like a, a camera come on and it's a live footage and it's like on a projector just behind you guys. And you you see it's, it's very clearly live and there's just people talking as they're like setting it up. Uh, it's very hastily like made yeah watch this you guys are gonna want to see this motherfucker yeah you think the patriots are cool as fuck watch this and finally the camera settles and a man steps in front of it and it's mr ball owner of balls massages <laughs> yeah i just needed to come in i needed to say something soon and orange is like yo shut this down this has got to be shut down but the video is just playing over him he can't get it shut down in time uh, and Ball steps forward. He's like, I have worked under the Patriots for goddamn months now. These motherfuckers have just come in and strong armed me. They have no input in my business. And they expect me to give them thousands upon thousands of planks every goddamn week. One time, they laid me down on one of my own massage tables. Where it's fucking twisting my toes. One of them shot <laughs> off my goddamn toe. Is a fucking, he had big ass fucking nipples. He was a Danish looking <laughs> motherfucker. He was blonde hair. He wore a wife beater. And it was fucking, oh, I hate that motherfucker. And then a robot gave me a massage. Okay? These people are not heroes. They want to paint them as heroes. They are criminals. Criminals. And you can ask just about anybody they work for. Or who works for them. They own this fucking town. And I hope they go rot in hell and die. <laughs> and with that, the video cuts off. Truce in the pudding, guys. That's all you got to see. And Ellis, I turned the rest of my time back over. Uh, Orange, he's like, okay, no more interruptions. There's not going to be anything like that again. I, 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 Ellis, final warning. You do something like that again, 
you're out of here, okay? And that's all I got to say. Um, <laughs> it's time we move on to the next See, why do just do that, play videos? I wasn't no, sure that I could prepare no. a dossier. You, no one's, I, I mean. Know, well, how'd that even happen? No one's allowed to do that. No one's allowed to this do that. This is kind of Bush League. Look. Just saying. He's the mayor. He's got a little pool. Okay, I apologize yes, so. to everybody. Strike that for the record, guys. Uh, <laughs> let's move on. Okay, let's just get, let's move on to the next question. I'm looking at the camera. Before we move on to the next question, we're going to go ahead and do a roll. An opposed uh, charisma check. Persuasion? Yes. Persuasion, right? Yes. You're rolling against his. 26. Uh, they, you, you, I think you got him because he's only got a plus four. But I'm going to see if he rolls at nat 20 or something. Yeah, you got him. Easy. So 26. First one is in your camp. Easy. So you look around at the crowd. Slowly, they're starting to shake their heads and nod their heads. They think it's bullshit that Ellis pulled out the projector mid-debate. Like, that's crazy. Crazy tactics. Uh, first question easily is in your favor. They're leaning towards you. Orange pulls okay. up a little more. Okay. Now, first question is you, Ellis. Or second question is you, Ellis. What are your thoughts on Arkney's criminal element? Specifically, the Patriots. I mean... What do you think, what do we do, if this is a criminal organization like you're saying, how do we act, what do we do next? Ellis pulls the mic up, he's like, it's obvious, isn't it? We need to, we need to increase funding in the police. We need to help the cops, right? We need, to, we need to make them stronger, we need to beef them up, we need to give them sole jurisdiction over Arkney, all right? These evaluator motherfuckers, they came in here Making me think, oh, I'm going to work with them. I'm going to help them take down this criminal organization. Where are they now? They betrayed me. So this is what I got to say. Tonight, right after this debate, I am passing a law from the comfort of my own home. I'm mailing this bill in. And this bill is going to give sole jurisdiction of Arkney to the police department. It's going to be done today, ASAP. We're getting it done. Okay. We're going to clean this town up. Orange, you're, he gives the time to you now to fuck. Oh, uh, well, didn't realize I was just going to be talking about the Patriots all night here. I thought this was about policy, but uh, here's the thing. Pretty convenient. Uh, right after this wire transfer happens, Mr. Pig conveniently drops out of the race. Whole lot of power is being given to the police department. Now, I know the people of Arkney aren't stupid, and I'll let them draw their own conclusions. And I would like to take a step back from the question, Bon, if you'd allow me, to just talk about one thing. Jeffrey Bepstein, otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise known as Ball, <laughs> as a known child sex trafficker. <laughs> And I will not allow a man of such repugnant moral character to assail me in front of you beautiful people. Okay, now everybody knows this man does nasty things with children. No! Okay? Nobody knows that. He's trying to interrupt you. He's like, yeah, that's, yeah, he's just saying Excuse that. Excuse me! <laughs> Excuse me! I'm snapping. Ellis, I'm going to need you to be quiet immediately. He has the talking stick. He's Cut talking. Cut his mic. Cut, Cut his fucking mic. We're cutting mic. the mic. Sorry, Ellis. No more interruptions. Please continue. Anyways, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that guy's a pedophile. And he works with all of the popular deep state marketing politicians just like Mayor Ellis. And the Patriots are an organization dedicated to stopping that kind of crime and all kinds of crime. And so you ask me what I think about crime. What do I think about the Patriots? I say we should support them with everything we have because they're all we have against the true villains and when it comes to where how i feel about the evaluators I, you know this guy's stealing my fucking swag on that i've been saying that shit since day one okay. he's just now coming to the table he stole my moves <laughs> i yield my time as you yield your time we slowly pull out from this uh debate and we're transitioning now finally to radio Wait, can I, do we roll? Can we roll? Uh, for that round? Yeah, we can roll for that round. 
Is there or is it not over? Uh, I that that question is over, but I yeah. We should roll for that one. Let me get my dice. I dropped it. Uh oh. Okay, yeah. Before we okay, so now that that question's been answered, let's go ahead and do a roll just to see kind of where opinions lie. Okay, he got a nineteen. Twenty-six. God dang. You cannot... Bro, you're a monster, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's firmly in Frank's camp as well. Easily. Uh, Frank clears that question. Uh, Jeffrey Bepstein, there's no way to prove that or disprove that on this scene, <laughs> so it's kind of crazy right now. Uh, the whole stadium's in uproar. And as that's happening, we pull away from the debate across town towards this random facility that radio has been directed to radio what are you doing i get out of the cab and say um thank you gary i'll be seeing you all right well radio it was nice meeting you man uh, you're a good girl okay i love you she daps him up <laughs> and leaves see you later he drives off. Okay. You start walking in. Okay. Make a perception check as you're walking in. I'll do that. But, hold on. 18. 18. So, here's what I'm going to say. You get a quick flash you see a flash of something behind you someone has followed you here okay i'm going to um pretend like i'm not noticing anything but i'm going to um as a reaction pre like prepare to dodge okay or i'm going to use my bone i'm going to use a key point to do a reaction to whatever happens to do a a, a dodge okay um Nothing happens, actually. You walk towards the door, and whatever you saw this flash of something, it's left you alone. Okay. Well, I'm going to continue walking, then. Okay. You walk into this facility. It's dusty in here. It's not a lot going on. Um, it's completely, like, you're seeing old boxes and stuff. Um, and you just find, like, your path is very clear. You walk to the back. And um, you see a table deep in the back, like a desk. And there is this locked magical box sitting on it. And you know from uh, talks with Hawthorne that this is where Benny Shard is. Okay. So as I enter the room, I don't see anybody? Nobody. Not yet. So I, I call out and say, Hawthorne, are you here? You hear... A few steps, getting closer and closer, and then Hawthorne comes into view. Radio, how are you? As well as can be expected, how are you? It's a good day for me, Radio. Things are going down. You watching the debate, it's pretty interesting. I was watching it on the cab ride over, it was very interesting, I really wasn't expecting the that, that free Epstein. No. Uh, I didn't know anything about that guy, honestly. Yeah, and that was crazy. I, I really wasn't expecting it. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, it's shocking, to say the least. So are we ready to do this, then? Yes. Let's go ahead. All right. I'm going to need you to take a seat here. And he gestures to a seat right in front of the desk. Uh, radio sits down. He pops open a panel on the back of radio's head and reveals your shark. Is there anything else you want to say to me before I do this radio? I hold up the folder. Um, say, if you can give this to Benny, or whoever you give Benny Shard to. Of course. Yeah. I'll take it straight to Benny. I don't care. All right. That's, that's all. All right. Well, thank you. And he, he, he takes it, and he puts it on uh, a desk. And there's, like... He puts it on the desk amongst some of his other things. There's like a, a Warforged head just by itself. Uh, there's like a Warforged arm. There's the chest and some other files and stuff. He just throws it on there. 
All right, radio. Let's do this. He reaches in, near snap, as he plucks your shard, and your body falls over, lifeless. He pulls the shard out of your head, and then he walks over, and he opens this lockbox. And you see him gently pull out this this uh, cube. Uh, it's called the boom box. And he pushes on Benny's shard, and it slots out. And he grabs it and lays it on the table. And then sticks a radio shard in there and closes it. And immediately, the shard, the box starts like sparking on the inside. It's having some kind of connection. It's connecting with radio's consciousness on the spot. And uh, radio, it feels as if your consciousness is being chopped into small little bits. But you're not losing any part of yourself. It's just being divided. And as soon as uh, you like are synced up with this box, you like feel this sensation of you closing your eyes and opening them. And then we flash to another room deeper into this building. And we see an army of 50 Warforged. All of them have wings and massive arms and you you guys look around i just want you to get this sense of what's here as all these warforged open their eyes all at once and you all see very clearly each and every one of these warforged looks exactly like benny they all have like a massive hammer on their back and they're all fucking strong just for context every single one of these warforged is um, their character sheets is a level 10 version of Benny. Just a level 10 barbarian. So maybe you could take like two or three of these guys, but if they fucking gang up on you, it's going to be trouble. And we cut back to Hawthorne. As he puts his hand on it and he says, sleep. And radio, make a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage. Okay. Oh. Dirty 20 on the first. Oh, come on. This is disadvantage. Oh, yeah, seven. You feel yourself slipping into a slumber. And he puts your... He puts the uh, the cube back into this chest and locks it. And he takes Benny's shard. And instead of slotting it back into Radio's body, he goes and he picks up the uh, disembodied head off the table. And he slips it into there. And he puts it back down. And now, Alex, you are Benny again. So, what, what has Benny's experienced subjectively since the explosion? It's been as if you're just in a dream and you're just waking up every now and then. And when you wake up, you don't really have any frame of what's going on. It's almost like you've been in like a limbo. Since this what explosion. about that one time he warned us? When he warned you, that was like him waking up from a dream, and he was like explaining okay. something to you. Do you remember? Does he remember that? So like he like does. a um like a intermittent sleep kind yes. of thing is what it felt like. So okay, so upon waking up this time, um, Benny, go, Benny tries to speak and he talk slightly. Yes. So you um so you hear like a very tinny like sounds like it's coming out of a piezo speaker somewhere in the headset asking who's there it's me Benny it's just you and me now and he sets the skull down you're immobile you can't move you're stuck here I'm sorry Benny I can't have you rejoining the others the Patriots are going to be enough of a problem without you and he leaves the head there and he starts to walk away we no longer have time to wait for the election. Things are kicking off, Benny. I had hoped to get Alfonso out of town. Protect him. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the thing, but... Benny, I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, I will keep Radio safe and alive. And he starts to walk towards the door. Benny just starts saying, wait! Wait, and, just, yeah, just, yeah. and you see, like the head is just like it's like gyrating from side to side with just like a, the 
internal like you know mechanism moving, but it's not doing anything besides rocking back and forth on the table. He stops with his hand on the door, and he, he kind of looks over his shoulder and listens. You sense uh, a feeling of like trepidation from him, as if he's not completely sure that this is the right move, and he stops. You know, you sense he, he's still in the room with you. You can hear him. What about the others? Do you, do you want to promise me one? What's the point? They made their choice, Benny. They aren't going to change. That's not the kind of people they are, and you know that. I can't promise that my new version of Arkney has a place for them. But for you, it will. Radio 2, and if I can stop Fonzie, Fonzie as well. I honestly really liked you. And he walks out and shuts the door. And you're stuck. And there's just... <laughs> of lights blacking out over your head. And it's in complete darkness. The only light you have is your headlamps. Just like glazing this table. Benny begins to cry. A little oil pulls down your cheek. And as you're crying, a knife embeds itself right in front of your face. And you look at this knife, it belongs to the figure. We're cutting away from you. We're now with Fonzie. Joel, what's going on? Am I, am I like just now like on the pavement or like what's happening? You're waking like, up, like you're standing after? up, yeah. Uh, I know, like, I, I had to ask Ryan, and he was all good, right? So I'm just like, well, well, uh, I guess let's go back up. We gotta go give Lionel back his pick, and I gotta go th get back my arm. I know I said I didn't, I didn't need it, but you know, I, I liked it. My brother made it for me. So yeah, no, there was a really like, up there. it was a cool display of like pride, like you throwing the arm away, but yeah, like that is kind of a really cool item, you know, and it gives you. Yeah, you know, shielding. now I'm going to have the power on, the, on my left hand and then uh, alchemy on my right, so I think that's pretty cool. You're, like, literally so cool. Like, how do we how do we keep the bitches off of you? Uh, let's go. Hey. All right, so we go back up. Is there, like, a guy that's, like, oh, to be, like, is it, like, because there was the one guy that was, like, cranking the elevators. Yes. Is it, like, manual or, like... All right. Uh, so I, is he well, surprised to, like, see me? Yeah, as, you, as you're walking through, um, I'm, you actually get stopped along the way. It's Vanya. Fonzie, hey. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey. <laughs> I figured oh, maybe I just... uh, you'd be busy with the debate and stuff today. I didn't think I'd see you here. Yeah, well, I just kind of had to tackle some stuff within myself, try to figure myself out. But, you know, I'm just chilling. Are you watching the debate right now? Uh, yeah, totally. It's it's really crazy. Uh, hey, listen, you think you can maybe cast a uh, healing word on... Uh... Jennifer, real quick, she, she's got a really bad headache. Uh, actually, hey, I, I can give her a cure wounds. I mean, if she needs. Totally. I mean, it's just a headache. I think, uh, I, and a lot of the zombies seem to be having kind of headaches and stuff lately. I'm not really sure what's up with that. Headaches. That's, yeah. Um, that's so strange. But look, let's not worry about it too much. Um, Fonzie, I'm really proud of you. Okay, you guys are doing a big thing today. Thank you, Bonnie. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, listen, I I don't know where we go from here, but I was... Uh, I miss you, Fonzie. I think we I should too. move back in together. Oh, are you serious? I'd be great. I was mad about my dad at first, but... You know, I got to talking with... Uh, Dumb, but you know, with uh, Bernadette, Bernie, we, we got to talking, and uh, she told me how you let her live, and she told me some of the things you said. I just can't keep living like this. You have my heart, Fonzie. Well, you have mine. I mean, I promise I'm going to make a lot more time for you now. I believe you. Things the, are looking up for us. Thank you, Fonzie. We're going to get my dad back, too. And then the Absolutely. elevator dings open. 
and you can climb in. Oh, wait, she's... Oh, okay, she was, like, just waiting outside yeah. the elevator. Cool. Yeah, I just, like, I guess, um... I would whisper, like, a healing word over to Jennifer. Just, like, um... Like, I don't... I don't know. What do you say to like cure a headache? Uh-huh. Just like, I don't know, get better. Get better. <laughs> feel good. Uh, you do feel that, good. and then you head up to the top to see Lionel Rain. All right, he's still there in his wheelchair. Yeah, well, he's yeah, he's not getting down by himself. <laughs> Fonzie, I just Lionel, started, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, you jumped off the roof. That was crazy. The building. That was pretty crazy. You have a good time. I know. It was pretty exhilarating, you know, like skydiving, you know. Look, one of those once in a lifetime moments. That's. Don't worry, I got I got your shard right here for you. No, 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 no. I, I'm not a guitarist. I'm a drummer. Okay, like I get that. the only thing about that shard was, it 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 made me feel connected to an ancestor. But Fonzie, I think you guys need it more than me. So I think maybe you keep it. Okay. All right. You want to keep the guitar, or you want me to keep? The guitar? No, that's I spent a lot of money on that guitar. It's okay. signed, so yeah, I'll take the guitar. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, you're on the roof of this building, as we transition away from you, back over to Caesar. So Caesar's waking up from this little man nap that he has having. Yeah, man nap. Uh, I'm a, <laughs> and I'm I'm assuming that everything's laid out the. Little Looney Tunes style lever system. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I, I, I find monked up actually for my little corner I was taking. What's going on? What's going on? I think we're ready. I think we're ready. I think we got all the plans ready. We're gonna we're gonna drop that lid on there when we push him in. If there's a backup, we got potions. I got things to throw at him. We're just gonna throw stuff at him. I what I want you to do as soon as you push him in. The lid goes down, you get on top. I need your weight to kind of counteract his immense putrid strength. As you're doing this, uh, you get a text real quick from your wife. Ooh. It was actually, she had texted you while you were sleeping. So it's it's been probably like 15 minutes since you got this text. But it just says, uh, have you seen Tufus? Is no. Tufus with you? <laughs> I said no. <laughs> um, okay. Well, she instantly responds, all caps. I just talked to Jennifer. You think maybe she just hit caps lock and forgot to unhit it. But she, she says, uh, I, I went and talked to Jennifer at the party. The baby's not here. I can't find it. They said someone stinky came in looking for you. Oh, Lord. Um, I send her my address. I say, come finish what you started. What? (laughs) Oh, no. Be right there. Okay. Okay. Okay, the stakes have been raised here. How so? They got my baby. They got Tufus? Yeah, they got my Tufus. I don't know. The plan is the same, but the stakes are higher. I think, I think we're gonna clean this guy. I think we're gonna take him back to the womb, no matter what you what you say. Dang. I mean, okay, if, if that's what we have to do, we can do. Yeah, it. and we're gonna we're gonna kill this crackhead friend of his and throw him in the egg vat. No, you're you're mad, Cz, Cz. Yeah, I don't like I don't like I don't like what's happening. Don't call me that. Oh, okay. They touch your. <laughs> Unless baby. you want to get it put in the egg vat. Don't yeah, look, I was just watching this debate, and they're saying there's a pedophile out there. A pedophile. They said this guy named uh, Jeffrey Bepstein is out here just grabbing <laughs> people. We got to be careful, because maybe oh, that's who took your baby. He died like two years ago. We're talking not even a guy anymore. Oh, I don't know what. You sure that's who they were talking about? There isn't anybody. I was like, that's who they were talking about. He said the guy who runs ball massages. Oh, I see. Jeffrey Bepstein. Okay. So I mean, if, yeah. if that guy's out there, you know, maybe uh, maybe we got bigger yeah, we fish to fry than some crackheads. We don't got it. We don't want to got to worry about that. That thing. That's not a. That's a non sequitur. <laughs> oh, okay. I just thought maybe you know. That's a divert. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. 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 Yeah. Well, uh, bad for, he was a pedophile, but he died a while ago. Yeah. Okay. Totally. totally. I see. I see the. Yeah. I killed him. Anyway, we're not off there. That's a prequel. Oh. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, well. Let's you do call this him. You, you call the stinking man. The The plan is the same. You got me captured. We're getting him into the fat. He's going to have my baby. We'll figure it out from there. We're just playing by ear. I'll call him now. Your wife should be arriving any second, by the way. I tell her, I text her to, to park in the back or wherever she arrives. Make okay. sure she's out of sight. So, he calls. And you hear him talking over the phone. Hey, um, listen, I got him. I got I got Caesar Rasper. He's here. I got him as, tied up. I'm going to shove him in his vat. We're gonna, you hear him? He's talking shit in the back. We're going to shove him in his vat. Fucking got me. Fuck. We're going to kill his ass. We're going to we're gonna fucking cook him. Okay? Just you and me, buddy. We're going to take on the world, you know, just like we always talked about. Uh, let's do this. Um, and then he hangs up. There's a short time skip. Probably about 10 minutes. And then the door to Drip Town explodes open with a fiery burst and in walks Peter the Putrid. He looks confident. Overly so. Somewhat angry, too. Instantly, he sees nobody. Where is Rasper? Do you call out for him? I, I've, I've cast this guy self on myself to make it look like my clothes are actually bindings, like the rope. Okay. You got my baby! You got my toothless! He walks into the, the other room, flicks a switch, and sees you on your knees. Oh, I do, Caesar. And in a second, we're about to have so much more. You're gonna have more babies? We're gonna have a lot of babies. We're gonna have a lot more than just babies, Caesar. And he walks close to you. And he grabs you by the head and makes you look at him. You're going to regret what you did to me. Trying to clean me? I'm a butt baby, Caesar. You can't clean a butt baby. It's in my skin. It's in my bones. The stink is me. And you're never going to find your baby either. You don't understand anything about the birth process. You were obviously a child, a fully formed infant before you came out of the butt. I don't know how you can't be in your bones. If at worst it's in your skin deep and you can scrub it off. You don't understand anything about how the human, how the orc body forms. Oh, it sounds like you don't know how the orc body forms because Caesar, my dad told me that some orcs (laughs) can get pregnant in their butt. (laughs) So I was just fully like fertilized in his ass. Caesar. So who doesn't know about orc anatomy now? Your dad, obviously. But listen, listen, we don't got to do it like this. You know, there's a there's a vat full of acid piranhas in there. I don't want to deal with that. I mean, we can cut a deal here, is what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't have to end like this. Like, how anticlimactic would it be for a Caesar Rasper to just get pushed in this acid vat and just die horribly? I mean, I, there's got to be another way we can go about this. I think it'd be fucking hilarious, quite frankly. All right? I got your baby. I'm going to raise him. I already gave him the pasta Pete. Send him down there with my little friend. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna raise your baby mm-hmm. and we're gonna make him stinky. Yeah, and he's never gonna know your <laughs> fucking name. He's gonna think I was his dad because how stinky he is. How's that feel, Caesar? How's it feel to have something you love taken from you? And he he takes something from his pocket and he goes to shove it into your mouth. And it's a dirty, putrid, mildewy, greasy sponge. The one you tried to kill him, clean him with. I'm just, I'm gonna move my, my head while I'm still talking. <laughs> He's making a strength <laughs> check. Okay. What what's it called? The Mr. Clean Eraser. Yes, sir? Magic Eraser. <laughs> he rolled a 17 on that. Let me make an oppose. I rolled Ooh. a 19 on that. <laughs> natty 20. That's a natty. That's a natty. I just crunch my teeth. You crunch your teeth and then peck him, and he drops the sponge on the ground. Oh, yeah. And he says... That's something very precious to me, taken a long time ago. The difference between then and now is, I was alone then. And now, now I know the power of what it's like to be part of a team. And I go like this, and I'm in a prone position. (laughs) And I say... Dang. 
you hear Monked up running. He's using <laughs> Step of the Wind. He jumps into the air. And he fucking double leg drop kicks Ooh. this man. And because he's caught off guard, I'm doing it with advantage. Uh, it's going to be opposed strength checks. Monks has a plus four. I'm saying nice. that... Uh, Roll him in the chat so we can Yeah, see let's do that. Let's see. So Monk has a plus four, but Peter the Putrid has a plus seven. That's Monk right there. Okay, hit it. Oh, come on. Is that what he will? Okay. Yeah, come shit. on, but he's got disadvantage. He's got disadvantage. Well, 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 well. 18. <laughs> so the 18 is a failure completely. This dude drop kicks uh, Peter the Putrid right in the chest, and Putrid stumbles back, trips over uh, Caesar's body, and falls into the vat. He's in there. Now what? I point to the, the guy in the eaves, the okay, the businessman. Drip town. <laughs> Slippy, he drops this thing, and this uh, this contraption goes to fall on uh, his head instantly and like kind of push him down into the cauldron even more. What I need from you, Caesar, is because you built this thing, um, I want you to roll a check to, to just see how well you built it. So uh, what would that be? Like... Uh, um, we had a roll last time I tried to get something. I think probably our survival. Survival is a great or, one. Survival is a great one, I think. Because okay. yeah, it literally is just a, a trap. That is what we did. And you said, I do need Ooh. it to survive. <laughs> or an 11. With an 11? Oh. The rock? One of them is Hold pretty on. secure. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, okay. I'm going gonna... to... Let me read through oh, this. My boy's juicing that. Perk. My boy's juicing that. <laughs> Let me read through one's this. one's doing luck. My boy, yeah. let me use that. I don't remember how much use it does a buy if it's even worth it. Let me use that real quick. Is it, is it like a D10? <laughs> it is a D10. Okay, I gotta try. I gotta try. Last time I did this, it didn't work, but we'll see. Give him some juice. Oh, that's a banger. That's a banger, Ocho. Hey, so that makes it a 19 altogether. Yeah. Okay, so with that, plus Ooh. 8. I say, please, 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 please. Yeah, when you built it, uh, it wasn't very secure, but the thing is, the way it fell, it just kind of, like, luckily, the rock stayed in place, and it, man it like, lands on his head, pushes him down, and awesome. so, because it's so well made at this point, and it landed in such a perfect way, uh, he's gonna get disadvantage on his first roll to try to break out of this, so he's gonna make strength checks to try to break out of this, and I'm gonna roll them against your survival, but the first one is going to be a uh, uh, disadvantage. So, um, so he would have to roll against what a 19 to break out of this thing. Okay, I like that. Oh, is that how that works? Is That's that how I'm doing it. 19 every time. Okay. Well, to break out of it. Yeah, his first that's time fire. Is yes, because that's but how it that was constructed. Seven, well. seven. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so he's just trying to see if he can break your structure. So yes, he gets out of he, uh, he's in there. He's stuck and he's fucking boiling right now. Uh, what's your move here, Caesar? I, I do a quick scan. Is there is there anybody else with him? Because there was a insinuation there might be. You look outside, make an investigation check. Two. And a seventeen. 17 you don't see anybody yet but you know those flames came from somebody else flames. the flames that he burst into the room with uh, okay. when he broke the door down that was not him so somebody's definitely outside yeah you gotta make a choice there i'm gonna i'm gonna get a pellet and i'm gonna throw it to the businessman i forget his name uh, Sloppy it's Sol. Slippy, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Slipping, hey, Slippy Jimmy. Yeah, Remember what we talked about? You, there's a second man out there. There's a second shooter in the grassy knoll. You, you hit him with whatever you got, but if you need to, you, you throw one of these at him. Don't even, don't even lick this. Just get it, get, get one of these in him, and he'll get taken care of. I gotta put it inside of him. Yeah, or like he's got ingested in some way. You how can, do you, how do you want me to? You're do gonna that? throw other things at him, right? You're gonna get him like. You don't got nothing that makes their tongue stick out. Listen, we, this is not a time for an extended conversation. Make okay, it I'll go. I'll you go. Build this business. You built this business off the off the sweat of your brow. Do it he's, again. He's running outside. He snatches it from your hands. He's leaving. He goes out the back door. Um, that happens. Uh, what what's next? Me and uh, I get monked up. 
But, okay, I'm assuming Monk that follow my plan and he's laying on top of this thing. Yeah. It's pretty. I text my wife, I say, I say, come inside, um, grab whatever cleaning tools you can find in the back. No way that maid is here. <laughs> she rips in um, from the door that Slippy just left. And you see her run towards a custodial cabinet, whip out a mop, uh, a duster, some sponges. She rips out some fucking industrial gloves, a bucket of bleach. She gets it all, and she runs towards you. Is it promotion time? <laughs> promotion time. He's, he, this guy pops out. I need you to hit him in the face with some, some cleaning supplies, some Windex, little a little elbow grease in there, and we're going to get him back down there. Every time it pops up, a little cleaning, we get him back down there. That's the plan. Honey, you really think we could do this? We tried it before. It is, listen, the thing is, last time I was actually trying to clean him. Now I'm just trying to torture him mentally, physically. I want him, I want him in pain. I've never seen a butt baby get clean, but let's do it. Yeah, we're. Well, I'm assuming it's unpleasant for them, so that's what we're going for mostly. Is she, she's ready. breaking his spirit more than anything. You gotta clean this guy. <laughs> she's ready. Okay, uh, no she's got what. a mop like pointed right at the bucket, just in case he okay. comes out. I'm pressing. I'm pressing down as much as I can, but I'm not on top of it. So my idea is, when he pops up, I'll be able to throw, hit him with something. And slam it back down so he has to roll again to try to pop out. Okay. So uh, you're like got like an attack of opportunity if he comes out. Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and make a like, check to see I'm, if he can bring out. I'm, me and the wife are ready for when he pops out. Hit him enough that we can slam him back. You got the Swiffer wet jet. Oh yeah. Ready to go. <laughs> jack of the box. So I'm gonna see if he can get out the first roll. He's got disadvantage on the first one. Luckily for you, because he rolled a natty twenty on his first roll. So nice. he's gonna break a nineteen. So if he rolls a twelve, he's out of there. Well, or, also 19 or higher. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Instantly, he bursts from the can, uh, container. He rips the lid off, and he's just holding it, and he starts smacking and, and throwing shit. And instantly, he closes the fist, and you see pasta strands uh, writhing out of uh, any kind of container around you. He's summoning, like, arms of fucking pasta. Arms of al dente, fucking uh, lasagna, and uh, angel mm. hair pasta. All the kind of pasta there is. It's all coming mm. out. And uh, he's causing it. He's made a pact with Pete. He's a warlock, similar to you, but Peter is his patron. Let me see something. I'll pop his ass. I'm going to cast Investiture of Flame. Okay. Whoa. That's like my one-a-day special thing. Dang. I'm not going to spell investiture right. Let me copy. Okay. And that doesn't cost a spell slot, but what it does is it, it it's like the, the spell in Skyrim where it envelops me in flames. So any creature within five feet of me is taking flame damage. So that also means the NPCs. I'm uh, making, that's kind of a, the choice I'm making here. And I get to cast the thing of, um, a line of fire that's 15 feet long and 5 feet wide. And I want to make a ring around this cauldron so that none of the pasta can get in and assist um, the butt baby. Okay. Easy. Uh, you do that. Flames erect around you in a perfect circle, uh, trapping you inside. Uh, so it's a d10 of flame damage for each NPC, right? Yes. Okay. Roll the d10. Or unless I, you want me to do it. I'll do it. That's a solid 10. Jeez. <laughs> 10. Okay. Mathilda, you watch uh, painfully as she, her face is seared. And she gets a, a, a real nasty burn right above her eye. Uh, as her monked up, his arms get singed. But remember, his arms are already like kind of heavily burned. So he just kind of takes that. Um, mm -hmm. Pete, he gets a blast right into the, the face and his chest is singed. But uh, it makes him just kind of smell worse, honestly. He, he, it's <laughs> disgusting. He's one of the worst smelling creatures you've ever smelled. Okay. All right. Did, he, did she get in there with some some? Brushes? Yes. The second that happens, she's going to get in there and try like start like waterboarding him with it. Okay. So I'm going to say she rolls like a 12, right? And he has to roll against it. It's going to be a dexterity check. His dexterity isn't as high. He, he, has the dodge. he still catches the mop. Okay. 
and he's he's not letting himself get wiped with it. But he's got one hand occupied now. If that does anything for you. Okay. Monked up. I need you to make a deck save against these these flames that do like four d eight. They do four d eight. Is that just the circle? Right, the line of fire. By extending in the direction in which you choose. So I'll just make it go outside of the circle. Okay, to to kill. You're you're just trying to keep the strains of pasta from getting to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so maybe okay. that that out that burst the flame outside burns all the pasta that was coming. In. But anyway, I say, monked up. I need you to I need you to hit the doggy on this guy. Get him back down. Okay, monked up. He he gets up and he uh, he uses a a key point to to do like the unarmed strike thing that monks do, and he just starts slapping his ass. Gets a couple <laughs> good slaps in. Um, no, he, I'm I'm trying to get him to push. Like, jump on the... Oh, thing. okay. He gets a couple slaps in, and then he jumps on, like I said. And <laughs> instantly, he starts fucking elbowing this lid. Uh, it's going to be a strength <laughs> check opposed. Uh, I'm going to give him advantage because uh, you're helping him. All right, so he gets a dirty 20. Peter the Putrid, he only rolls 17. So he is, pff, again, pushed down inside of this container. And by the way, these, gonna... it's boiling chemicals. It's You're cleaning him, okay. and you're fucking doing your best in there. Good. Because at the same time, if it wasn't boiling already, I'm I'm going to put my arms around the cauldron to get him, to get it, it hot, Ooh. to make him cleaner, to okay. make the, the chemicals yeah. more effective. You're, you're, you're singeing him, dude. You're fucking, you're doing your job right here. Okay. The chemicals, they're doing some shit to him. They're, they're definitely, you hear him screaming from inside and suddenly there's an explosion you hear from outside the building, very close to you. And you hear the sound of like brick flying and shit, but you can't see outside because of the circle of flame. You can't see what's happening. Oh lord. <laughs> okay, what's your play here, Cedar? I so that's the, so he just got knocked down. I'm wrapping my arms around it. What was the token that I was given by Gluttony to summon? It's a big fat hamburger. I ate the hamburger. You have to eat the whole thing. You gotta make it constitute. It's disgusting. It's a fat. It's like imagine a baking king times four. It's this big, dude. <laughs> the greasiest burger you yeah, ever seen in your life. I'm, I'm like, Howls. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> Joey Chestnut. I'm Joey Howls. Chestnut. Got some, some innocent American hot dogs. I'm hungry, <laughs> dude. I'm you're, angry at your jaw unhinges, bro. You just, <laughs> you eat this thing, and then suddenly, you. F- Does the stomach hurt? Your stomach not allowed to hurt. You, no, your <laughs> stomach don't hurt. don't hurt. There's a shadow stands. that fills the room very briefly. And then when it is removed and you can see again, this fat god is sitting on top of this uh, cauldron, mm. sealing the lid closed. Mm. <laughs> you could be Caesar. There's enough, enough gluttony for you. I mean, it's a little gluttonous, I suppose. You ready to make our deal? Yeah, let's talk about it. You said you said you'd give me an immediate to Hawthorne's power, and and what else? Immunity to Hawthorne's power. Did I say that? I think so. <laughs> I actually don't know if I can do that. Okay, okay. Let's talk about let's talk about what we can do here. Here's what Listen, I'll I do got this. a situation here. The baby that we have a vested interest in, this this guy in this cauldron that you're currently sitting on, sitting on, which I very much appreciate. The longer you can stay on there, the better. Um, he stole that baby that's containing um, the devil that we don't like. So, I feel like we have a vested interest to make sure this baby doesn't end up in the wrong hands. So this baby is with Pasta Pete now? Well, yeah, I'm not sure how much of the Lord you know. You know, I'm not sure how omnipresent gods are, but yes. Pasta Pete, we're all familiar with him in the spirit realm. He's That's strong. Not good. Oh, no, it's like not good. I don't like that knowing about him. He has a lot of spirits. He's got a name him. for himself. I'll tell you what, though. I see a perfect opportunity here. Caesar, you make a deal with me now. Shake my greasy, grubby, meaty little fucking claw here. You shake that, <laughs> and you get powers from me. Okay? Number one, your baby's abilities will no longer have any effect on you. You can live carefree with him, love him. You won't have to worry about eating him again. <laughs> Number two, Caesar. 
you're gonna have an endless appetite. You can eat endlessly. Your stomach will never be full again. Anything you eat will come to me. It's a very powerful ability. And all That's that it, I there's two things. Name something else. Usually you pitch something to me. There's nothing there's nothing you can do to help me with this Harry Hawthorne endgame boss activity. If you consume enough of pasta peat, I will grant you a third ability. And hey, listen, if all you wanted to do was to get pasta peat in your stomach, that's all you had to say. I mean, I feel like that's a great deal. I mean, I want him dead. You want to eat him. That's, yes. that's a win-win right there. He looks so yummy. Hey, but listen, for, for the sake of... Because of, I've made a deal like this before and it didn't go my way. For the sake of, you know, full faith and credit, I, f I feel like you need to sit on there for as long as you can. I need this butt baby cleaned. How about that? Let's get this butt baby cleaned. You will erase any negative impression I had of the deities from your father. And we'll shake on it. It's as easy as that. You can't expect me to make a deal like that after, you know, my history that easily. But if you help me get this guy clean, we'll shake right now. You wouldn't clean a butt baby? You can't clean a butt baby? Everybody keeps telling me that, but I, I really don't believe it. I don't understand <laughs> <how that> <laughs> It's in his bones. Everybody knows that. That doesn't make any sense. The bones are formed before he <laughs> left the womb. <laughs> Caesar. I'll sit on this pot as long as you need me to, but I don't I don't know if we're cleaning a butt baby. <laughs> How much clot would it give you in the in the nine realms in which you reside if you cleaned a butt baby? Because we of. we can we <laughs> can you know what? I feel like it's gonna be heard of today, my boy. We got me, we got this monk guy, we got this wife. I don't remember her name anymore. She's the janitor wife. We I feel like you putting your hand to this is gonna be the tipping point. And that's just more than eating pasta peat. That's going to give you so much clout where you come from. There's one thing I can think of. But you're not going to like it. What's that? <sighs> Your tongue. I can make it into a sponge. It can absorb practically anything. <laughs> you're going to have to lick him clean. <laughs> Lick him everywhere, bro. Do I? Do I have to? What if we make Monk Dub do it? <laughs> I feel like he'd like that. The powers have to go to you, Caesar. Why? <laughs> that was our deal. I can't make a deal, deal with just a random Take fucking Monk it. Dub motherfucker. Take the deal. This is the only fathomable way to clean a butt baby, and even then, <laughs> who knows? Butt babies can't be cleaned. I mean, that's common fact. <laughs> common fact. <laughs> Are you gonna lick this butt, baby? <laughs> Shake I look, my meat. I look hair. at my my friends here, and I and I see my wife. She's getting burnt to a crisp, really crisped up. <laughs> Just fucking see, do it! Just fucking do I see, it! I see monked up. She's screaming, and I and I, sh and, I and I reach my hand out. I say. The last thing who made a deal with me and made me regret it they didn't have a great time. Just keep that in mind. I'm scared of you, Caesar. And as he shakes, you feel a transition of power. Your arms explode with energy. As it's like a wire. He's feeding this energy into you. Your head falls back and your eyes shoot open. You see the universe running before you. You see every fucking inch of thing, anything this guy's ever eaten flash before your eyes. And then you clamp your eyes shut. And when you open them, you are swarming with power. So, um, here's what I'm going to do. If you eat anything, if you eat, like, so here's the thing. Um, I'm going to, we're going to do a roll, right? Mm. 
uh, at like the beginning of every day. And if you eat like the number that this roll is in pounds of food, you will get a uh, plus 10 temporary health for that day. Okay. All right. Until it goes away. You know what I'm saying? But basically like if you consume enough, you're going to have a temporary pool of health, extra 10 HP. And it can come at any point. You use it. it could be like an emergency ration or something. Um, but uh, yes, so this is just another side effect of this ability. Okay. Caesar, your feet gently get placed back onto the ground, and you take a step towards this cauldron. As we cut, we're back with mm. Frank, <laughs> back at this debate. So, Frankie, Frankie, Frankie. You're winning the debate so far. It's going well with you. Orange, he comes in for another question. All right, uh, we're back with you now, uh, Philip Fuck. And look, this one's a simple one, really. Uh, basic. What do you, as a candidate, believe that Arkney needs the most right now? I take a long, pregnant pause... And look like I'm gazing out into the stars. <laughs> it's a long time. Like, like people start checking their watches. And I lean in real close to the microphone and I say, We need hope. You know what I'm saying, Bond? Everyone starts, like, questioning in the crowd. There's murmurs. You hear one guy say, Did that guy just say hope? Like, <laughs> that's what you hear. Uh, <laughs> and You know what I'm talking about, Bond? Uh, yeah, I want to talk to you man to man right now. Man to man? Yeah, we need hope. I agree with you. <laughs> oh. What do you mean nice. by that? What do you mean by that, though? What do you want the most in your life, Bon? You, personally. Talk to me. I want to live in a world where dickheads don't just call up my family and start harassing them. He's shooting daggers, at Alice. I want to live in a world where people are treated equally. What's the common through line? Both of those little anecdotes, those futures, those worlds. It's hope. You hope some dickhead won't call your phone. You hope things will be dope. Yeah. But right now they're not dope. And if you want things to be dope, you gotta hope. You gotta hope for fuck. You gotta hope for me. Is every bad thing in Arkney? I'm not even. I'm not even doing my voice. Every bad thing in Arkney. Everything that's ever gotten you down. I'm gonna bend it over. <laughs> Put it on the couch. Turn on some nice music and light a candle. <laughs> and you know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. I don't even have to say it. He doesn't even have to say it. People from the crowd are cheering again. They're excited. I'm sorry for getting a little abstract on y'all there, but, you know, this is a safer TV program. No, we get it. We get it. We understand. It makes sense. Cool. <laughs> All right, uh, Ellis, your turn. Same question. Ellis leans in. He says, you know what I think we need in this city? I've been mayor a long time. I have. How, how many years have you been mayor? Fuck. How many years? I'm asking you a question. Am I allowed to answer, Bond? Cut the mic. He shouldn't be talking when I'm talking. And he, he turns back to the crowd. He says, you know what we need here in this town? It's fucking <laughs> order. <laughs> He's trying to be petty because you had his mic cut. It's order. <laughs> we need order here. All right? Justice. And I, the only way I see of us doing that we got to beef up our, our fucking police, all right? We got a great police chief right now. A, a, a fucking a man's man named Henry fucking Hawthorne. And he can fix this town. He can. Absolutely. I think we beef up our, our, our fucking... We have a fucking military running through the streets. No crime. Arkney will be the safest place in Worm. Hands down. And that's what I want. Order. That's what's important here. What do you fellas think? Make a roll. Uh, per, uh, persuasion against... I don't think I did very good on that one. 
You got 20, dirty 20. Dirty 20? That's not how that works. <laughs> Ooh. Oof. 18. The he first time. I'll just get you. Order. You scoop me there. It's a big answer. It's a big answer. So. I straighten my, my tie that I'm not wearing. Start doing a little shadow boxing. I'm getting ready to drop the nuke on him. Dang. Orange says, all right, moving on to the next question. Philip. There are strong calls in our city to defund the police. Some people seem to be quite against Ellis's viewpoint here. Thinks maybe the, the police department's too strong. You know, uh, there, we see points to uh, police brutality through the streets. Uh, Kenku getting beat up, zombies being having arms ripped off while we're trying to put them in cuffs. What do you what do you think here? What do you what do you think's uh what are your stance? Well, I think like most things, we're dealing with complicated a uh, complicated issue here. You know, on the one hand, you need a strong police force to keep the rule of law and to make citizens feel safe. But you have to balance that with not letting them get so powerful that they're able to abuse that power on those of us who have the least amount of resources to defend themselves. And so I can commit that as the future leader of Arkney, I would keep a robust police force. And one with Henry Hawthorne, who happens to be a personal friend, at the helm. But I would make sure that there is a powerful regulatory state apparatus. Well, not state, because this is just a town. But an apparatus nonetheless. I will keep track of these bitches. Make sure they're not doing any not dope shit. That gets a booming response. Uh, people love that. I mean, it's a straightforward, pragmatic answer. People love it. Uh, what happens is, it's now Ellis's turn. And he leans and he says, How many times do I gotta keep saying it? The police is our power in this city. We gotta beef them up, make them fucking strong, dude. Yeah, okay, yeah. A little bit of police brutality here and there. Hey, it's for the betterment of society. We're cleaning up the streets. Am I right? <laughs> Ellis says, he says, sometimes we got to get a little rough and, and, and we got to tumble with these criminals. That's the only way we keep the city clean. Am I right, Arkney? Am I right, Arkney? And that is why, you know, you heard me mention earlier that I was going to be passing a bill tonight right after the debate. Goddamn change of plans. I turned this bill in before I even came in. That's right, Arkney. This bill has been signed and transferred. It is in law currently. All right? And I'm announcing it right here on the debate stage. It's my policy. You just did my, my thing. It's our policy, Arkney. I thought of it first, and I put it our, in. Ours as in it was mine, and then he changed his mind. Cut that mic. Why is that mic still going? If we need to cut the mic, Orange, what's going on here? Are you running some kind of kangaroo I'm, court? My mic is cut, and I'm pointing at him. <laughs> uh, okay, let's make a roll. I'm Trump maxing. Make another roll on this. This guy is, is Hitler. He got an 18 on that. 20. 20. Dude, the 20 is good. So, here's what happens. I also shouldn't have... I should have gotten a 21 on that last one, I just realized. Oh, it doesn't matter anyways. But you it's okay. It. It's okay. We passed this one. So, here's what happens. The crowd is actually not very happy to hear that Ellis passed a law without, like, going through the proper channels, without, like, making uh, a thing b beforehand, a press conference or anything. Just to hear that he secretly passed this law, it's got a lot of people up in arms. Frank, a lot of people are just kind of, like, booing Ellis now. And they turn, and they're clapping and cheering for you, and they want to hear your side of the story now. They want to hear you Can talk. I say something, Bond? Hey, you have the, the floor now. Of topic of passing laws without anybody asking for them. You know, uh, my opponent here did admit that he had a conversation with a member of the Patriots. And you know what, Arkney? He's right. Because like I said earlier, the Patriots were working to uncover this deep conspiracy between him, Pig, and the police department. And I can prove it. These people want to come together 
to get you down. They don't want you to talk. They don't want you to be equal. They don't want you talking to Kenku, talking to zombies, sharing a struggle. Because what will happen is they know that you'll band up against them. So I would like to announce that tonight, a platform for the voiceless is going to be released. Town squared. All the cool fucking pot-smoking teenagers are going to be on there. <laughs> it's going to be sick. And you can, uh, everything's dope. You can say whatever you want. You can just talk all, all the shit you want about Mayor Ellis. <laughs> One other thing about that visit the Patriot had to Mayor Ellis. You know what he was talking about? He called him on his bullshit. Called him on the, on the operation that they exposed. And they said that they were going to help. Let him off light, maybe. If he would just do the right thing. Ellis is waving his pass, hand. And pass a law. Giving full citizenship and voting rights to Kinku and zombies. He mentioned it earlier. He said that they came in there and asked him to do it. He laughed in your face and said he would never do it. This man doesn't stand for you. He stands for himself. Look at just what he uses his, his power to pass. He's a bitch, too. I love that. <laughs> the, the bitch <laughs> rings out over a silent crowd. Everyone takes it in. And then everyone starts cheering. Yeah, fuck, 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 fuck. Everyone's cheering. Everyone loves you, dude. Everyone's so excited. And it's cut short as the projector kicks on once again. And you see just a table in the middle of a room. It's live footage. And on it is a chest. You guys watch carefully as Henry Hawthorne walks in and opens. Everyone's shocked. No one knows what's going on right now. He opens this chest and pulls out this box. This is live footage being displayed to the entire debate and to all of Arkney as he grabs this and he steps on the camera and is in full view. Hawthorne is revealing himself holding the boom box. We cut. Really quick, back to Benny. Benny, this knife, it snaps your attention. You're looking at it. You know this knife. You recognize it. Immediately, you see dangling feet, and then poof, the figure drops in front of you and snatches his knife, and he grabs the head. Don't worry, I heard the whole thing. Fonzie told me to follow Hawthorne. We're going to get you out of here immediately. Let's go. So Hawthorne took the boombox with him? He left, yeah. He left with the boombox. Okay, okay. All right. So Benny says, all right, let's go. All right, is there anything else we need to do while we're here? I think just grab that folder. Um, okay, grab the folder. What about Radio's body? Do we leave it? Uh, yeah, no, no point in bringing it. Okay, let's leave. Uh, you start to run out, and as you run out, he skids to a stop, and then <laughs> explosions, right? As you look behind you, and the roof of this building is being blown to bits. All 50 of these Warforged have spurred to life and are blasting out of this room and they're now hovering in the air flying above you and you watch as they filter over the city and they go in all sorts of directions you have no idea what to do here we snap back to the broadcast that's happening alfonso are you watching it still are you watching at all yeah you're on, oh, the, roof. Still on the roof you're going down right oh, is now it like an yeah oh, oh, I thought you hit the okay. oh. so you haven't gone down yet you just helped him, and you're, like, walking down. Uh, so okay. if you think you're watching it, uh, like, on, like, the Bo Bogan podcast, a, he's probably covering it live. Oh, for sure. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I got, like, the Patreon live stream to watch them react to it. Yes, exactly. You're okay, seeing this. Cool. Hey, Ronnie, check this out. You look out over the city and see all these fucking robots flying into the air. You don't know exactly where they're coming from. All you know is something's going down right now. And we cut back to uh, Frank at the broadcast, at this thing. And you watch as Hawthorne stands holding this box. And he says, People of Arkney, I am your police chief. All my life, I have wanted to protect this city. My entire life 
has been building towards this moment. Well, I will rescue you. There is an assault on Arkney. It's coming apart at the seams, my friends. And I've watched it for too long. It's time for my first command. And he grabs onto this box with both hands and just fucking squeezes it. And you watch, there's sparking at his fingertips as he squeezes it tight and you hear him utter the words, no more crime. Psh, the box explodes. It doesn't actually explode, but it explodes with energy and starts shaking in his hands. This is what triggered the Warforge to start flying throughout the city. Immediately, we get a flash throughout all of Arkney. The robots are descending upon various businesses, all owned by the Patriots, and they're ripping into these buildings. It's very much a flashback to the Tiny Toll. They're dragging people out. They're dragging this character out, this character out. Sticky, uh, most of your people are at the skyline, so you don't have to worry about them. But like unnamed, like, dude, Fucking, they're ripping into uh, the taco shop. Yeah, the car dealership. They're dragging these guys out. They're beating their asses. It's horrible. We cut back to the skyline. Out of nowhere, Jennifer, she's rubbing her head. And you watch as her eyes glow green. The same kind of green from when Lirio Han was controlling them. Instantly, she rears her head back and tries to snap into Sticky, who is right next to her. Sticky sees a dexterity check, slaps her out of the way, and he starts crawling for the exit. Total panic within this building as everyone is climbing out, running around. We flash to the dying district. Everyone in the dying district, all the zombies, eyes bright green. Every zombie in Arkney is turning. No one knows why, but they start filtering out onto the street as well. Shit is going down. Alfonso, we're back with you. You feel the building rock at your feet. There are explosions underneath the city. Deep, deep underneath the city. The entire skyline starts to sink into the ground as there are explosions beneath it. The skyline collapses. It's sinking into the sewers. And it starts to fall over from where you're at. You, what are you doing? Are you, what's the play here? Dude, I mean, I'm just gonna like grab onto Ronnie and Lionel and then um, cast Featherfall again. Featherfall happens. You, you cast it and you start falling off the building slowly. You, these guys are protected. You have no way to know if anyone else inside the building is safe. Shit is going down all around. For all intents and purposes, this is the end of the world. And that's the session. Why do the birds go on singing? Why do the stars?